So good, e good evening, everyone, and welcome to the November 17th meeting of the Merrimack Conservation Commission. It is now 6.33 p.m. Uh, we, we have a quorum. We have all full-time members here. Lauren uh, is not able to make it tonight, and I'm not quite sure where Tom is yet. So uh, for those of you who are watching on TV or catching the replay, um, it is hunting season. Uh, it is firearm season now. So if you're in the woods, wear Hunter Orange. If you're interested in hunting on conservation property, go to our website, merrimackoutdoors.org, and see what properties allow that. And of course, follow all fish and game hunting rules. Um, that's all I have for announcements. Anyone else have anything else? All right. Um, public comment. See no public comment. Uh, appointments we have done. We'll jump right into our first uh, major agenda item, and that is a conservation easement at Chestnut Hill uh, through Old Blood Properties LLC. At this point, I'll recuse myself for this agenda item and come back after it's over. Ken, welcome. Please uh, sign in if you would. Thank you, Matt. For all of those uh, at home, and <laughs> it's really nice to meet you. My name is Ken Clinton with Meridian Land Services, and I'm here representing Old Blood Properties uh, in this discussion. Um, this cluster application has been uh, before your group, the Conservation Commission, uh, twice before. One as a very preliminary introductory uh, session just to give a general overview of what we're looking to do, the um, overall configuration of the likely subdivision at that time. I dare say it might have almost have been a year ago. Uh, most or more recently, I think it was June perhaps that I was here in a little bit more specific detail talking about our likely wetland permit, um, our crossings, some of the issues we were dealing from a design standpoint. And I suggested at that time we would likely come back and formally request the Conservation Commission to support um, an official oversight of a conservation easement. Uh, where this is an open space subdivision, we clearly have to abide by the open space regulations as far as a uh, minimum of 50% open space, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, however, when we're talking about the wetlands permit, because our impact cumulatively is over 10,000 square feet, we are required to have a, a minimum 10 to 1 uh, ratio of upland protection. And the upland protection needs to be in more than just, quote unquote, an open space lot. It needs some level of third party oversight. And uh, that's where hopefully the town, through you as a commission, would come in. And uh, I shared that was the likely. Uh, approach that we would uh, formally request back in June. So tonight, quite frankly, I'm here to request that the Conservation Commission um, obviously can't accept an easement yet since we don't have it finalized and there's no written documentation. But as we look to submit this uh, plan to the planning board on next Tuesday, a week from tomorrow, to be heard at their December 16th planning board hearing, we are also looking to submit our wetlands permit in between November 25th, next Tuesday, probably shortly after Thanksgiving or the, at the very beginning of December. So all of our wetlands permits in prior to our planning board uh, meeting. With that plan, uh, submission to DES, I'm hopeful, and this is uh, my request, that the Conservation Commission will have a, a written statement that says that you are willing to accept conservation easement oversight with obviously the language, the deed to be found acceptable uh, to the town uh, and the Conservation Commission. Uh, that really is the, the sole purpose of my being here tonight. I do not have a wetlands permit to share at this time. Uh, as far as the specifics of each crossing, there's two on site. There's about four culverts we're replacing on Old Blood Road, and then there's a, a crossing at the intersection with Madeline Bennett. Um, we can come back and talk about the particulars of the wetlands permit. Once again, it's a, it's a 
larger major impact permit but it's really critical that as we are finalizing our permit that we can describe uh, with legitimacy that it is our intent to uh, convey an easement to the town and that the Conservation Commission is indeed accepting of that subject to final wording etc. Uh, to that end I, I had prepared a fairly simple exhibit that illustrates the overall or the, the, the area protected lands, the green being town, either town owned or easement. The well, depends on how your color printer is printed out. Mine's a little bit more pinkish than I think. Yours might be a little bit more purplish. But uh, this was the uh, a privately held series of uh, protected lands. And the Chestnut, Huts, Chestnut Hill subdivision is here. And there's actually four open space lots, and I've shared this. And, and this design, quite frankly, hasn't changed uh, in any substantial degree since last February. The more northerly open space that's adjacent to the school conservation area is about 23 acres. And that's this section here. Now, admittedly, in that shape, it doesn't add substantial corridor width or, or contiguous singular area at, at 22 acres or 23 acres. Um, however, it's substantially larger than the minimum 10 to 1 ratio uh, of upland. Once again, if, if we have 10,000 square feet and we need to multiply that by 10 and we're at 100,000 square feet of, of upland protection, well, two acres is in the 80,000. So we're talking about two and a half acres worth of protected upland. Uh, this northerly section is 23 acres. So we're, we exceed what, we're, what we are technically required at minimum to, upland, uh, to mitigate by upland. We're exceeding that by 20 acres just in this northerly one alone. But the, the functions and values from a wetlands standpoint are not very substantial in that strip. I mean, 23 acres is nothing to just discount, but quite frankly, I'm sort of discounting it because I don't think it has, it, I don't think it meets the criteria other than the acreage, in which case it's substantially larger than we need. But it doesn't have a high value from my standpoint. The southerly, area down here, this is about 86 acres. And that really is, from a land uh, protection standpoint, substantially uh, protecting a lot of wetlands and vernal pools. Uh, there's a lot more value and benefit to that. The other two open space lots along with the subdivision are, uh, they'll be protected by open space requirements, but because of their location and, and uh, the type of land, we're not asking for easements internal of the uh, subdivision lots. Uh, there's low benefit to that. So there's going to be greater than 100 acres that we're looking to uh, have the Conservation Commission agree that uh, you would accept a, an easement on, once again, pending final versions of the, of the deed that's agreeable to the town. And that's what I have. Questions, man? A few questions. Um, the 23 acre parcel yeah. north of. It's north of the proposed lots and just south of the, the middle school conservation easement. The road, the newly adjusted Old Blood Road. Correct. Would our easement property go down and touch that? Yes, it would have quote unquote frontage. Okay. Yeah. Due to the nature of the slopes down there, it wouldn't be. I I suggest that you probably wouldn't have a parking area on this property, on this open space, because as soon as you transition from the Madeline Bennett cul-de-sac now, and as we start to uh, go up the slope, uh, the flatter, more uh, gentle area that could be, uh, say, a possible parking here would actually be on the school property for which you have a conservation easement currently less so the open space lot here because it, the, the terrain's just too steep I'm assuming that's where your question was going Matt just just a question <laughs> <laughs> so 
So the area to the west, or I'm sorry, to the east side of that, that's underneath now what the road, the, uh, the new road between what, what Old Blood Road is original and the new road? This, what's it's a lighter blue? Yeah. That's an open space lot. Five. Pretty wet. Um, in, that, in, in fact, that section is not very wet, but at five plus acres, uh, it doesn't have... It doesn't have the same level of conservation value that would rise to the level of an easement by the town. Uh, there'll be that that area will have some drainage in it, uh, so there'll be some drainage easements. It's going to be a little bit of an infrastructure yeah, spot. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's less. It, it didn't rise to the level of something that was worthy of asking for oversight for a conservation standpoint. Is that something that's going to be tried to left? be left relatively natural except for except for probably two sections that will have some drainage on it it's part of the open space and the open space is to be left uh, you know otherwise undisturbed except for particular drainage uses okay. it, it won't have any other utilities it won't have buried uh, uh, sewer lines or utilities like phone cable electric it won't have that that those will be in the road I know you spoke about this once, but if you couldn't mind explaining it again too, is now on the far side, on the west side of that cul-de-sac, on the west side of that whole development, there's a cul-de-sac right there? Yes. And obviously it abuts right to a rather large parcel. The rather large white yeah. <laughs> spot in there that so screams to be conserved as soon as I made this exhibit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I directed one of my guys to do it, and uh, I knew it was going to show that, but boy, does that jump out at you, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, from a from a planning standpoint, proper just without thinking of conservation at all, it's really logical and proper planning and, and pretty much a necessity to have the the new road bump up to that piece. Um, ultimately, what becomes of that piece of land, I don't know. But from a planning standpoint, it is proper to give it access in that way. Uh, I can't say what will happen with that in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that the. Can you speak to the determination of you know how long can that road be that spur between before this? Well, the town has a, a dead end road length uh, in the subdivision regulations of twelve hundred lineal feet. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been that's a, it's a waiver item. It, you don't need a zoning variance. It's a subdivision waiver uh, by the planning board. If you can show for whatever reason it, it's logical to do that, it's safe, etc. That it otherwise meets the general intent of the of the regulations. Um, I haven't looked at that piece to say, you know, how many, how, how much road could be constructed there, how, how many lots possibly could be done, or what's the connectivity. I can tell you that just simply from the topography that's on the uh, available online at GIS, um, there is a high point here. In fact, it's, it's from what I can tell, the highest point in town, yeah. by within. 10 or so feet, maybe 12, 15 feet at the most. But this section over here is fairly steep. Yes. Um, the, the cost of road construction, the nature of the traversing that slope, I don't see this ever as a, as a through road that would make it, say, down to, uh, um, what's the name of the road? Yeah, Greater South Greater Greater Road. road. I, I don't see that as feasible. But then again, this is there like possible expansion out of the cul-de-sac? I know there's some off of Amherst Road, a lot of developments have happened like that, where they've expanded out of a cul-de-sac well, and gone into another piece of land. You know, I, I guess at this point we're, we're talking about property that's really not part of this application that I represent. But how, how long is it, that road, roughly? I think it was something like seven or 800 so feet. feet. So, yes, it could be extended to another six or so hundred feet. That's that 1,200 foot. But you still end. have, and that's subject to, you could have a, a waiver perhaps, uh, you know, and we've, I've pursued waivers in town before, and, and as long as from an engineering standpoint it's safe and reliable, it's, it's, it could be considered. But that's, once again, um, although this exhibit really shows, uh, you know, a fairly stark right. comparison of, wow, that, that's in there, and that would be a, Quite frankly, a really nice property for the town to acquire or the conservation right. to have an easement. Um, what I'm showing is is a greater connectivity around it. That if it didn't come the town's way, or at least in in whole, possibly in part, that this does create a you know a lot of 
basically we're suggesting to add another hundred acres to what's already protected in that area of town which is I think pretty pretty substantial yeah. given the uh, given the progress on our application and you know we've had a uh, but a five-month period where we were dealing with the school board at the SAU, the district itself, um, traffic safety committee, town engineer, as far as Madeline Bennett issues and the connectivity with the middle school. Uh, we've overcome that, and so, as I said, we're poised to file with the planning board on Tuesday, and it's, it's critical that we have a third-party oversight component to this open space. Um, I don't see... Um, the location and the, the size of the open space that we have being attractive to uh, an independent, if you will, uh, third party like Society for the Protection of Hampshire Forests or, or the Audubon Society. It's not substantial enough uh, or connected to any of their holdings. So uh, you're saying you're meeting with the planning board on the 16th? December 16th is the planning board meeting. And our filing with DES is slated to be uh, just after Thanksgiving, uh, I might say uh, on or about December 1st, although that would be a, s no, that's a, first, that's a Monday, I believe. December 1st is a Monday. Um, so our, so you're finally, you, you'd, you'd like to have our, it's critical when we file with the DES that we have, have some statement that this is our intent and some level of supporting documentation from your group uh, again preliminary based on uh, you know working out the, the, the and language in the deed and I can't so imagine that we'd have a problem with coming up with an agreeable language and uses etc Do you, you don't have anything in draft I don't have anything point? personally right now but I'm sure we could provide you uh, in principle, if you're agreeable, that's that's what I'm here to hopefully gain your support. The details of the language, I really have no doubt that we can work something out. And the first thing I'd do is probably go to the last easement that you uh, yeah. accepted and, and treat it pretty much like boilerplate and just double check a few things to make sure that they made sense for, for this particular subdivision. Uh, but I have no concern as far as us coming to an agreement. Yeah, you know, th things that I'm sure we're all concerned with is being next to the school property, you know, passive recreation, um, you know, just th things that you've yeah, seen in easements in the past. Yeah, we've talked about yeah. certain different things in the past, like that Tamazian property. Uh, obviously, if we take a look at the, uh, the easement language that's on the school property now, it seems like we would at least continue that exact same language onto the uh, the 23 acre piece and maybe it might make sense to modify it slightly for the 86 plus or minus acre piece as well so I mean we have a starting point um, but I didn't uh, feel it was appropriate to just bring a deed in with me tonight and say yeah let's just copy this if you know I guess I need the in principle understanding that you're agreeable and then uh, we can work out the details. So obviously, the planning board has to be agreeable to this, uh, so it doesn't town council. Uh, because ultimately, uh, you know, they can accept. Yeah, we cannot. Yeah, you, you can be given the oversight, but but uh, it's really an easement to the town to be oversight overseen by the conservation commission. Any other questions? No. So. I don't want to overstay my welcome or, or push, <laughs> but uh, you're gone. It, 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 <laughs> uh, I think if there's anything, if if uh, obviously I've I've in the past I've I've gone about my way and let you discuss uh, this and make some decisions on your own without me being here. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, I can uh, be happy to answer anything. You can contact me through uh, the community development department. And, uh, but if you feel like you're you know, good to uh, write a brief, even if it's just an email response, per our meeting on uh, 
November 17th. We discussed it, and the Conservation Commission is agreeable in principle to uh, accept oversight of a conservation easement uh, with the details oh. to be worked out later. Uh, something to that effect, as simple as that is, if we could include that type of correspondence with our application, that would really move our DES application forward. If not, then it'll be stalled. Uh, I guess the, at that, I'll uh, end my comments. <laughs> and when does your uh, request, or when did, when does your information have to be to the planning board uh, for their to, to, to get ready for the December sixteenth meeting? Is that before or after? It's actually next December. Tuesday when we file for the submission for the uh, planning board. But this memo for that filing date, it, that's there's no critical deadline at that point. Okay. Uh, if I was to try to impose a deadline on you, it would be December 1st. Right. <laughs> that's, uh, that's up to you. Anything else on that or general questions? Uh, once again, the plan, the design has not changed really at all um, as far as it's the configuration of the road system, the lotting, the open space lots, it's all the same. Uh, and there'll be a minor tweak here or there, but substantially it's, it is in, indeed the same as we've been showing since uh, last February or so. No, I, don't, I don't have any more questions. Back then you had a great map that had a little bit more detail, the topo and things like that. You don't have that tonight? I don't. Okay. Uh, but when we come back, uh, I'd assume you'd like us to come back when we have the wetlands permit uh, uh, mm -hmm. filed so you can officially you know, accept it and we can speak to some of the specifics of the design. At that point, uh, we'll have a, a f I don't know how many sheet, probably 30 sheet okay. plan set that'll have as much detail as you want more. Great. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Do you intend to continue this conversation today? I think so, yes. All right. <laughs> thanks, again. thanks again. So for uh, for Ken, do we wish to prepare comments before December first so that he can uh, have our support? I guess the better question is: Does anybody see anything wrong with us accepting his proposal of, of oversight on the hundred plus acres? I'd love to find a problem, but I just can't. <laughs> 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 well, I shouldn't even say it that way. I mean, I, I, I'm not against having the development of this property. I just, uh, I'm not a fan of its location, but it's, uh, you know, they've done. He's done a nice job with it, so I don't think there's really a whole lot of. Is this the property where, um, when he was here last time, we were talking about? trying to make sure that the uh, homeowners didn't use like fertilizer on their lawns and no no this, no, this, is, this, okay. this is the middle school oh okay this is over off of uh at the end of babusik lake go all the way to the end oh yes okay straight across have you, have you driven up madeline bennett drive to the middle school yes and there's the tur big turnaround mm -hmm. that, that that circular turnaround that's right here that's that's the turnaround right there Oh, okay. So as you drive up toward the school, this, there's a turnaround, there's signs right there, and then you drive up around the school. Okay. And then this is Old Blood Road that goes this way, and this is what they're proposing is they're going to move Old Blood Road off this straight line that comes from Bean all the way back down and up into this. Okay, and then we would oversee just the dark the dark blue. Right. And this is still open space, but it's not space, that but we would. I mean, no. Right. It's open space to be available to the neighborhood or... In the case below, uh, towards the other neighborhood, that's going to be protected space. So, buffering. Okay. And this is property that we hope we'll get <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah. It's almost landlocked, not quite. Yeah. 
well, but even then, those purple or pink or whatever colors you want to assign to those, those are under an easement, but they're private. So when they want to take them out of that easement, yeah, that's wow. their yeah their decision. You know, it's like forcing your own deadline. Right. You know, it's conservation land now, but right. it may not be right. And when they decide it doesn't want it to be, yeah. The only um, concern I have is is the wording. So I I hesitate to say yes, we accept oversight. Well, and, and the wording comes back contingent, contingent on upon you know uh, contingent on our agreement of, of the wording. I mean, you know, and that, that's something we can put into the email is you know contingent on our on contingent on the on the on the agreement, the written agreement between the on the deed, yeah. the written stipulations in the deed, and the easement. So contingent upon deed wording. Restriction, yeah, deed restrictions and wording. Because, I mean, where it's particularly where it meets up that top section, I mean, Ken, Ken was pretty accurate in my, in my thoughts, was uh, particularly where it meets up with that top section, the light green. Mm -hmm. To me, those deeds need to be pretty, pretty close yeah. as far as restrictions and, and use. Uh, the the section below, I think, is going to be pretty stiff also because it's just that there's a lot of wetlands down there. So there's going to be a lot, you know, there's going to be very little trail development, very little use of that property, other than you know maybe a couple spurs or something like that. But how do you get to them? Mm -hmm. It's all private. It's all it's all private. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with that either. Just having well, exactly. There's nothing there. wrong with that. But I mean, it's yeah. it's. And you, I've been o I've been over there. I mean, there's not really a whole lot to look at. It's you're it's wet woods. Oh. Okay. So it's not like it's a and there's a power line easement that goes through it. Yeah, it's not like this. It's it's not like it's a pond or something that's really this beautiful little setting. It's just a it's woods. People aren't really going to be attracted to go out there. And yeah, I mean the kids. You see you see kids out there every once in a while. They're out there playing paintball and stuff like that. It's like oh okay, but they're not. There's not really a lot of use out there. Unfortunately, there's some mud trucks that get down in that area. I've seen them down down here. Not are they getting. Up and no, they're, but they're in that in yeah, the, right. in the blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, provided his wording, that may mean we have to do something where right now we don't have to do something. Yeah, but it, that, yes, and that becomes an enforcement issue, just like we have up in the rest of Greater Woods. Right. So. Know, that's something we're going to talk about here with right. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> relatively soon anyway. So. Uh, with our next guest. <laughs> with our next guest. Yeah. <laughs> so are, are we okay? And I don't even know with four of us if we have quorum. How many people in the? Seven. Yeah. Seven. So four is okay. quorum. Four is yeah. quorum. Okay. Seven. Yeah. Seven? Seven. So <laughs> that's someone else. <laughs> are, are, are we in favor of, uh, of writing um, a support? email to Ken saying that uh, we will accept the easement contingent upon Oversight deed easement. restrictions yeah. and yep. wording uh, of the restrictions on the easement. Yeah. Absolutely. Easement and, and different wordings for the top yeah. and bottom pieces. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Wonderful. I'll, I'll draft something. All set? We are, thank you. Great. Are you I take it whatever you decided you're gonna put something together. If you decided something, sorry I was distracted. So oh. Yes, we're I'm going to put something together for you. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Get that out of the way. So next on our agenda, uh, Lieutenant, if you want to join us. Sure. Uh, anywhere. Uh, or over there. Right there would be great. If I could All get right. you to sign in the sheet, that camera's only going to catch the back of your head. Oh. So. Okay. <laughs> That's good. We'll have some fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to keep all our comments to ourselves now, right? <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't met Matt, this is Lieutenant Matt Talton. How you doing? Hey, Hello. Right. 
So quickly around the table, I, is Cynthia, Matt, you've met Matt, Gage, myself, Tim, and Good. Mike. How you doing? So. Good. Hello? Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah, appreciate you coming. No problem. So did you get a chance to see our last meeting or, or watch any of it? Uh, unfortunately, I did not. Okay. So I didn't have All a chance right. to see that. All right. Um, so, but so the last time, you know, we, we talked about it, I went and visited with you and, and the chief and the two captains. And uh, after that meeting, we met as a commission and kind of talked about what, what uh, transpired at that meeting, you know, talking about pamphlets and other things. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, the chief also sent out an email to update us on, on what he, what you all had talked about after the meeting as well. And I think everyone got a copy of that back when. I don't know if you brought it with you or not or whatever. So, uh, so uh, I guess the point of tonight is to how we can kick this thing off and try and get it in all together and in place and, mm -hmm. and have something that we can move forward with uh, probably you know, as soon as mud season hits next year, if not sooner, depending on you know, where we want to go with this. So, uh, okay. so how much more background do I want to get into, I guess? Um, well, where do you want to start? Anything in particular? Or do you want me to just kind of walk through a few things? Yeah, I mean, if you, yeah, if you just walk through it. Um, I guess we can kind of kick off from where we discussed or the discussion that we had at the PD yeah. about how we wanted to do this. Because um, I, I think the whole objective was to establish some sort of um, uh, a patrol out there with yeah. us um, that would be beyond what we're typically doing with the fishing game right now, which is few and far between. We don't get a lot of those grants. Um, so when we do it, um, there's not many of them. And typically, it's a four-hour grant. And it's a town-wide thing. So I've done it a few times. So when I go up to Greater Woods, I can spend maybe an hour up there at best. But then you got to load up and go somewhere else because you got to spread the wealth. Uh, so we'll go uh, Horse Hill and some of the other areas in town where we had some OHRV problems, illegal use, trespassing issues, and so forth. So. Mm -hmm. um, would be nice to have a dedicated patrol out there, so I think that's kind of what we were looking for. So right. we wouldn't be sidetracked going somewhere else. We we could dedicate our patrol to that property and that property only for a four-hour stretch or whatever you folks decided you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then just um, I think the big thing is just out there is posting um, where people can ride and where they can't ride. Because right now the biggest thing we run into is people aren't familiar with where they can ride and not ride. Some of them know, but they can't ride and ride, and they, they'll ride there anyways. Uh, but I think posting is a big thing. I think if you direct most of these people to where they can ride, they'll stay out of the prohibited areas. Granted, you're going to have some people here and there. They're going to do their own thing. But um, I think for the most part, if people know where they, they can ride, they'll stick to those areas and stay away from the areas where they can't ride. So signage, posting, kiosks, any of that kind of stuff, I think, is what would help us, um, would help, you know, the patrolmen in, in general, because right now we're riding out there. We have a general idea as to where people can ride and not ride, but there's no posting signs, there's no nothing. So when we bump into somebody, uh, all we can do is politely suggest that they move along, which is what we've been doing, mm -hmm. unless they're engaging in some sort of illegal activity that um, we can take action in that particular case. But um, So that was it. And you had mentioned the pamphlets as well. Yeah. I thought that that was a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe people they can contact at your end, somebody at your end that they can reach out to because you had talked about maybe volunteering to clear trails and make areas where people can or create trails where people can ride. Um, I'm sure there's a number of people in town that would be all over doing that. So it's kind of. Okay. Yeah, so. We have four classes of trails out there, and the Class D trail is, is more geared towards motorbikes, uh, but none of those exist at this point. So the subcommittee is looking at some of them or potential where they might be, but you're not, are you probably not doing anything to your volunteers? I don't want to speak for you. That's why I'm looking at you. Yeah, yeah. Co correct. They, they, uh, they said they were going to go and, and flag it, and then they said the time just wasn't there, so that okay. they were going to put that on hold. I see. So you... you Kind of would think, but maybe not, or maybe we haven't reached the entire community. So, yeah. so hopefully, if we do, well, I think we, I think we as a group want to put together a pamphlet that you would utilize when you ran into people, and hopefully that will generate some more interest and more volunteerism. Yeah. So, because the 
the small group that we're working with um, hasn't been able to pull it off yet. So, and we're volunteers, and we work with all volunteers, and we understand that that happens at times. You know, right. you know, things happen, and then maybe six months later, and then people are able to do things. So, but we did in initially. Um, we we ordered a lot of signs and hung a lot of signs to keep people where they should be. Okay. Um, those signs were removed when they weren't in a place where somebody liked them. them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, several of the patrolmen came and, uh, you know, I showed them where it was. We put them back up together. Mm -hmm. And uh, several of the patrolmen know areas where are now posted no motorized right and you know i was out there this weekend and there's tracks right past those signs yeah motorized and the the school property which has always been no motorized is posted with signs that are you know the size of that wall right there they're, yeah, they're uh, big. no motorized and again this weekend i was there and dirt bike trails coming out of the, the school property mm -hmm. um, it's just um, it's tough even even when it is signed it's tough oh, it, it absolutely is you know um, the Conservancy found what foundation they, they put the signs up on their, their property well shooting was going on yeah yeah there was shooting this weekend yeah, I drove by right there was three Jeeps out there <laughs> and I mean they had a folding table with an armory on it yeah yeah we could hear it loud and clear yeah, yeah this weekend I, he, I don't know he lives right near there yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm sure you got calls this weekend because the group that was out there was yeah I'm not I'm not sure I know that the people that if you're a neighbor out there I, I know that we've had quite a few phone calls uh, people were usually pretty good calling it in mm -hmm. um, yeah I, the, the signage thing is uh, it, it's it's tough because I, I understand exactly what you're saying. I mean, I've, the Conservancy Foundation signs, the, the no trespassing, no shooting, I've seen a number of those loaded with bird shots. Somebody hit them with a shotgun. Yeah. Um, so that kind of stuff is going on, and they're going to steal the signs. Um, and that is theft, right? So that is prosecutable if you catch them. If it. we caught, that's, yeah, the catch the is catching them. Right, right, <laughs> understood, yeah. Uh, that's, that's the big thing with that, is, is finding out who these people are. Mm -hmm. um, yes, absolutely, that's yeah. something we would prosecute. Yeah. Um, we have three license plates if you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> three license plates? <laughs> People that are stealing signs? No, from to, from this weekend's shooting. Shooters. Oh, the shooters. Uh, yeah. We, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would encourage you to give us the information because we can run the registrations and get the information on these people and call them and follow up and find out, you know, you know, what they were doing out there and just make them aware of the fact that there's no shooting allowed on the property. It's pretty much what we've been doing. Um, but now the signage is out there, we can take some action on it. You know, before the signs were out there, which was an issue, right. all we were doing basically is we were issuing people warnings for uh, trespass and sending them on their way. Um, but now if we catch them out there, we can, it's, it's a little different with the signage. Mm -hmm. But it's a matter of the signage staying there and being put in an area where people can't just access and take them down. Um, so I, I get it. I know it's a problem. Um, and that's why we're trying to work with you to see if we can figure out some sort of compromise of getting us out there on a more frequent basis. Right. It's just tough because, you know, uh, we'll have our guys on the road and they're handling calls or what have you. Uh, we don't have the manpower to dedicate to have a guy just patrol out there. That's the problem. Right. And that's when we had talked about this, uh, this detail um, where we could just have a guy that's dedicated to patrolling out there and he's not going to get sidetracked with handling a call or whatever else. He, that time frame would be dedicated just to being out there. And we would try and schedule it for days and hours where these people are most likely frequenting the property, right. which is probably weekends for the most part. Um, so that's, that's what I would suggest. And, and I think once we start doing that, if we can start doing that, mm -hmm. then maybe we can start cutting back on some of this illegal use, some of the illegal shooting, and whatever else is going on up there. How are you thinking about patrolling? I mean, we were hoping like for a mountain bike patrol or something like that. Yeah, uh, we, had, we had talked with Tim about it. He had mentioned that. Um, we, we can definitely do that. Um, personally, I think having been out there and patrolled that property, I think you're going to get more bang for your buck if we're on a four-wheeler. 
Um, we'd be able to cover a lot more ground in a quicker amount of time. Um, and, you know, uh, not that we're going to be getting in any high-speed pursuits in the woods, but if I need to catch up to somebody, um, it's going to be a lot easier if I'm on a four-wheeler as opposed to a mountain bike. Um, I understand the concerns. Obviously, you don't want people out there riding around on four-wheelers. What, why, why should I be tooling around on a four-wheeler right. out there? I understand that. Um, our guys, for the most part, if, if they're working in that detail, they understand um, the sensitive nature of riding around out there, specifically some of the trails and where they're located near the wetlands. We're not going to be rutting up the property or anything like that, uh, if that's a concern of yours. I mean, obviously, we'd use extreme care riding around out there. I, that's what I typically do. Mm -hmm. um, so the department so. currently owns a, a four-wheeler? Yes, we have two. Yep. So have you got a uh, kind of a baseline as to when there's activity? When do you get the most calls out there? When do you have the most most issues that you have to respond to? I mean, is there kind of a targeted time that we can say, look, you know, we're going to start the patrols. We should start them on Fridays at six, or you know, is there anything? I haven't done any. I haven't crunched any numbers on that. Um, all I can do is tell you that from my experience in, in, in reviewing reports is typically what I do a lot of right now is reviewing reports. Uh, a lot of it is on weekends, right. you know, um, and it can start with kids going out there and partying on, you know, Saturday, uh, Friday nights and can carry over into Saturday and Sunday. But most of the shooting incidents and the four-wheeler stuff is on weekends, so Saturdays and Sundays. You know, and I try and we try and pick a, a period of time where, you know, people are not usually out there too early, you know, they'll get up and sleep in on a weekend and get out and go out and go for a ride or what have you and or go out and shoot so I would aim toward early afternoon noon time on uh, but uh, those are the types of numbers if you wanted us to crunch them we can we can figure that out and give you a better time frame you know because we can lock in whatever calls that we have out there and try and figure out the days and times and, and kind of narrow it down that way that is something we can do yeah I mean we, we discussed that as like obviously we're going to ask you to go out there patrol but we'd like to have it be a time that's fruitful. Right? Oh, absolutely. Make it make it worthwhile. So yeah, yeah. I think it, I think you hit it there. Not in the morning and weekends. Yep. Yes, I agree with that totally. Yeah. yeah. Also, I guess, I guess a question I have now um, from one of your previous comments is: is is there a way that we can help before we um, set up these patrols to make what you do out there more? enforceable well I don't want to keep going back to the sign thing I, you know I I haven't I haven't been on that detail it's been a while since I've been up there uh, but the last time I rode was probably midsummer and where I, I went in from the greater road at that that road leads you up to the top where all the shooting was going on mm -hmm. so did you go in from the private property gate no. yes Okay. Yeah, well, basically that, that entrance right off of Wilson Hill Road. It's, right. it's up in the oh, okay. 90s South or, yeah. Yeah, right. Yep. So I went up that way, and I know a lot of people that access that property in general. I'm not saying all of them, but in general, a lot of people use that road to get up there because it's just it's easy right. access, um, especially if they're shooting or doing whatever they're doing up there. Um, I don't remember seeing any other than the Conservancy Foundation signs. I don't see anything else leading on the road on the way up indicating, you know, private property or right. no H. I didn't see anything unless unless I missed it. No, we don't have any signs there because we don't own any property. Yeah, there. we don't know. Okay, our property doesn't start till just beyond the Conservancy property. Yeah, because that's when I got past that and I got down to where that, that marshy area is. Marshy, right. Yeah, that's right about where. Then our I can start is. seeing some of the signage. Yeah. Um, but then I rode some of the other trails that would take you toward, let's say, where that old blood development is going. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't remember seeing a lot of signs out there. Now, I don't know if signs were posted out there or what. I don't know what if any of that property you own out there. None. Not, not much. Not, no, see, it's really, yeah, it's, it's, it, we, we, it's an awkward layout, which makes right. it harder. Well, that, yeah, then... then that would be the thing. I don't know if a lot of people that ride up there or use that property or have used it because it's just been there and they've been riding there for years and thought it was okay. I don't think that they know the layout. Right. You know, I've got to be honest. I'm still trying to gather the layout myself because of the mixed 
you know, uh, privately owned parcels and the town owned conservancy, all that stuff. So I think if we had these handouts um, or anything that we could get out to the public, whoever, whether we're disseminating these things or however it works, something that tells them where the trails are that they can use and how they can access them versus the ones that they can't use, and the areas to stay out of. Mm -hmm. I think part of, part of the thing too is, uh, you know, they're not the riders aren't really accessing the property through the normal trailhead channels. They're coming, right. you know, from so wherever they can. Right. Yeah. So, so they're, not, they're not going past our <laughs> kiosks, so they don't get any information from our kiosks. Well, along with what Matt was saying, I mean, suppose you know we could potentially overmark the border, especially the lower half. You know, this this section of the border. I mean, overmark this. It's yeah, I know it's it's marked. It's well marked. I know. I I walked through a lot of it and did it. So, but you know, instead of being able to see the other marker sign, maybe we maybe you see the next three. You know. Well, let me see. They own these parcels. Right. A lot of the trails go right through there, and there's nothing we can do about them. So, I think what Gage was alluding to is, do we want to? Mark all along our all along our property all these trails that are kind of coming in. What's the we, we you know the, the the edges the typically when you mark the boundary you know you you put a bar you put a marker boundary up and you make sure you can see the next one. Yeah. And in some cases, particularly when it's well foliated out there, the next one may not be able to be seen really easily. So we we you know we could you know come up go up and double tap on them and you know put them a little closer. I'm hesitant to banging up all sorts of signs in the woods but uh, you know obviously if we're looking for your support then and if that's something that would make it easier for you guys then I suppose it's something we should we should you know consider doing at least on the boundaries so, so what you have Matt before you is we have a, a trail system we, all but the class D trails are laid out they're mostly marked with triangles or squares or color markers to indicate and the color indicates what the use is but then there's a whole bunch of other trails that come down to ours but we're not maintaining them we're trying to discourage them but they exist so people are coming into our property sometimes taking trails off of other properties that we don't maintain and we haven't marked them so the question is is do we want to go all the way to where they hit our property line and then put up a big sign that says you know stop don't come here I don't know if we want to do that or not and we haven't done that because then you end up with all these signs all over the middle inside mm -hmm. of the forest so and you kind of lose that natural habitat, but we might be we might be our own worst enemy by not yeah, doing that. Yeah, that's the same. We could, you know, because the the boundary signs are you know boundary you know Greater yeah. Woods town yeah. town property type thing. So, so we have boundary signs. Sorry, just to, yeah, but we have these white boundary. Are they the white ones or the blue ones? White, the white, the white ones. We have, we have white boundary markers with mm -hmm. an arrow that tells you this way is our property, so that way you know when you're crossing the property line. But they're they're, they're a distance apart from each other because we didn't want right. signs all over the place. And, and they don't give a whole lot of description on what the use is. Right. It just well, that says was going to be my... Yeah, that was, yeah, it, just, yeah, it just says the property, mar a, property boundary a, a boundary marker. A boundary marker, someone may not mean... It may just... They just made... All right, well, there's the boundary. But there's nothing saying I, no OHRV use, no, right. you know, don't go beyond this point. Right. The, the, the areas where we knew, where we knew we were having issues... We went to that boundary marker and paired it with two or three no motorized vehicles. And um, those are the ones that are disappearing. They're either disappearing or they're ending up with some colorful descriptives uh, on the sign. Okay. Yeah. It, it fifteen dollars a pop or something like that. So we spent quite a bit of money on signs. So never yeah. mind time to maintain them. You know, volunteer time, but yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty much a, a, a battle. Me hanging signs, yeah. and whoever's taking them down or writing me messages on them. Right. <laughs> yeah. well, Love notes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we, we've even, what, we've even considered putting up cameras. You know. Yeah, like game cameras. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess that's where we would probably work with you guys. I mean, because I, I know you're up at the property a lot, Matt. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, if we were to do something like this or get this going. I would want to have close communication with you and find out where exactly the most recent issues were. Mm -hmm. And that way, if we do this, we're not having a guy wasting his time driving around this conservancy property or what have you. 
they can hit those targeted areas and maybe find out who these people are. Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, sometimes it's just a matter of following tracks to somebody's backyard or what have you. Because uh, I know that there's some, there were some concerns with people leaving their homes right, yep. and just driving out there. And we still have that. Still that. That yeah. is still a concern. But, but fellas, well, you, can, you can drive right into their backyard. You can see what they're coming in. Yeah. And so how I mean, smart is that? If we, <laughs> if we were able to identify those locations and those people and working with you, um, we could concentrate our patrols in those areas and find out who these people are and hopefully, you know, take care of the problem. In, in a yes. lot, you know, in a couple of cases, we already know who they are, mm -hmm. and you know we can give you that list. <laughs> but w the patrol just seems like the right thing to do to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think it. I, I think if the people see us out there patrolling on a more routine basis, and they know we're going to be out there, or there's just something in the back of their head, oh geez, if I, <laughs> if I'm going to ride out there today I'm, I'm, I'm taking a chance there's a risk here I'm going to bump into somebody it might discourage them from riding out there mm -hmm. and might encourage them to ride somewhere else where they can ride yeah. I mean because meeting, meeting these people uh, or, or, or locating these people identifying them accomplishes two goals one we can tell them to stay off a certain location or stay out of these certain areas and at the same time if I find out we get an idea as to where they can ride I can direct them to where they can ride now, are they going to follow that advice? Some will. Some may not. Mm -hmm. you know, especially if you've got a lot of people that are leaving their homes. Um, they've been doing it for probably 15, 20, some odd years. And they don't like when somebody comes and tells them, you can't do that anymore. It's just an unfortunate yep. fact of life, but it's, it's a reality. And, and I've had those conversations, and they can... They don't mind telling me where to go. Yeah. <laughs> However, when you have that conversation with them, I don't think they're going to have the same conversation back. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's <laughs> typically a little different. Sometimes it's colorful, <laughs> even yeah, with us. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, and, and that's the other thing too. I you know I, I always try to encourage people um, to call us as opposed to getting engaged with these people, especially if you're in the middle of the woods. You know, it's two of two of them and one of you. The best thing you do is just, as much as you may want to give them an earful because they're, they're not where they're supposed to be or they're doing something they're not supposed to be doing, we always encourage people to call because uh, the last thing we want to see is turn into a physical confrontation or what have you. It's not worth it. Um, yeah. but I, I think that's what I would do is, you know, I, I think that you were kind of, if we, if we go ahead with this, you were going to be my point in contact, we would stay in touch and then... Um, if we did this, it'd be me reaching out to you and saying, hey, listen, where, where do we need to unload today? Where do you think? And that's what we would do. Great. Yeah, because in this property, we've pretty much tried to allow motorized use every, everywhere we thought we could do it, given the wildlife or natural conditions. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of wet areas out there. And some people don't realize that they're riding through a vernal pool and they're killing hundreds of little critters and stuff like that. And yeah, no, it's probably a lot of people that don't know. They, don't, they just yeah. look at it as a rain puddle or what yeah. have you, yeah. Yeah, that that or they, they create puddles where we didn't have them before. And now all of a sudden where we didn't have a vernal pool or we had a wet area, now all of a sudden we do because they've ridden it through it so many times, it's now become rutted, and now it's starting to hold water, and, mm -hmm. and they're creating wetlands some, sometimes, creating their own problems. You yeah. Say. But, so what about money? Did you get a chance to get an idea of costs and uh, stuff like yeah that? actually I spoke with Captain Albert today because I was trying to get an idea for our, our detail rate and it varies anywhere from 3546 an hour to 5548 that, that's just it, labor right yeah so, yes that, so we, we would have costs related to maintenance of the of the machinery too probably um, no no you would not no no fuel costs or nothing like that I yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Let me right. put it to you that way. Right. No. Okay. No. We wouldn't. No. There would. There would be no charge for maintenance or anything like that. No. Okay. No. Because I mean, there's. No. I. I don't. I don't think that that's right. going to be something you folks should have to worry about. Okay. Now we we talking time and a half hours. Uh yeah, that's basically what it is, and the, the thirty five forty six is is the is the baseline for if a patrolman were to work the the detail, yeah. and the fifty five forty eight is is uh, is the highest end of that for uh, if, if the supervisor were to work it. So mm -hmm. that's 
that's the the price range right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it'd be like two hundred dollars for a four hour shift or something, probably. Yeah. Somewhere in that vicinity, yeah. Right. So, um, like we talked when we met, we have to have some documentation, just so that way anyone asks you know, how were your con con your conservation funds expended, as well as it'd be a great communication tool. You know, you could say, well, we did this, we patrolled here, we saw these kinds of things, mm -hmm. and that way it's documented. We can look for trends over time. So. Um, were you thinking that you'd reuse the same kind of forms you've used with the fish and game, or is there something else you want to put together, or should we kind of have us kick some ideas around? We could probably use the forms or... or um, Cause I, I've never seen one of those forms, so I don't know what detail is in there. Yeah, so. we could probably use the form um, as a template, the one that we have for the fish and game. Yeah. Uh, I think that would be good, because it, it, it does, it, it lists, if I recall, you know, whether it be OHRV contacts or any other types of contacts, pedestrian, you know, all that kind of stuff is in there. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I could try and grab one of those forms and show it to you and all right. create our own form. Just a log activity is basically I, what you're saying right, as yeah. far as, yeah. Yeah, so it'll serve two, two purposes. One is to, is to log your activity so that way we can go through the logs and say what kind of trends are we seeing. You know, and that way we'll see if, if things are getting better or not, if mm -hmm. things are shifting from one side of the property to another. It also is our backup to say we spent the taxpayers' money in, 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 the, in the right format. We followed the, what the money's used for or what, what the money is intended for that we have in our fund. So that way okay. if anyone ever questions, I have that backup. Okay. So We would also have, uh, if we did have any contacts with anyone out there, we'd typically cut reports. You know, we'll have a report generated. Mm-hmm. So you'd have that documentation too, okay? Because um, we'll we pretty much document anything, any sort of contacts we have with anybody. Mm -hmm. um, even if reports not generated, we have contact with somebody in the woods. We check on somebody or anything like that. That all gets documented. So, okay. That sounds good. All right. Uh, so we've got some homework to do. Then we'll have to generate a pamphlet. Yeah. Right. Um, would it be wise to create a map uh, that shows the authorized and the unauthorized trails that we know about? Uh, you yeah, probably for you, the patrol for the patrol. You probably would like to have that. I would suspect. I, yeah, for us that would be huge. Yeah. It really would. Yeah. Um, I, I you know I don't want to create work for you guys, but right. I don't know how much work that would be. But um, yeah, it's some of it might even be on the internet now because a lot of people are GPSing trails. And then they, they, <laughs> they there's, a, there's a few websites where the people upload them, yeah. and that way they can tell their buddies, hey, go grab it off of, of trails.com or something or whatever. Yeah. You know, and that's how word of mouth spreads too. People go to these, some of these websites yeah. and, and find out about places that it, they didn't know about before. So yeah. just one thing to keep in mind: we were cautioned uh, as an organization uh, a while ago to about documenting non right you know, non-dedicated trails and non-authorized non trails because the minute we document them, they've become authorized whether we want them or not. Right. So, so maybe so first time that we meet, I'll... We can give you the real map and then maybe we can start right. penciling in the places that we know of. <laughs> but okay. I don't, I don't want to generate a map that's an official map that's right. got non-authorized trails okay. on it. I agree right. with that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, because I think you should know about some of those other trails, and you should have something that you can refer to, because especially if you want to get from point A to point B, it might be quicker to go through an unauthorized trail. Or, or yeah. you know, there's a, there's a parking lot that accesses this trail system that's in Amherst. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's all valuable information for us, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we'll work with you guys however you want to do it. Okay. I just, you know, the whole pamphlet thing for me is just a matter of just educating the public. Because, right. uh, you know, I, I think that there might be some people out there that are using that property that don't have any idea really where they're riding in particular. They're just, there's trails out there, they hear word of mouth, yeah. it's a great place to ride, and they end up going out there. Right. Um, that's how a lot of those people that are up shooting on the Conservancy property, and we've bumped into people from Massachusetts. Right. Uh, other towns they're not even merrimack residents to some of these people and i asked yeah. you know how did you find out about this place and it's all word of mouth yeah. right. so 
Right? Who wants to trailer to Clough State Park when they can trailer to the backside of Merrimack? Exactly. Right? And when you've yeah. unloaded all your guns and you see that private property sign, oh, well, you've already unloaded all your guns. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, shoot them all, too. Uh, <laughs> right at that sign. Yeah. Uh, some of them have blasted pretty good, unfortunately. But. So while I've got you here, are there yep. other properties here in town that are maybe associated with the commission or with, or with the town that, you know, we want to be thinking about at the same time? Are we basically going to push people from one problem area and then create another one potentially? Well, uh, that's, always, that's always a potential issue. Mm -hmm. Um but that's why I think if if we can steer people to the areas where they can ride here, yeah. I think it might alleviate some of those spillover issues that we run into when we basically, for lack of a better way of putting it, kicking them out of one spot and sending them somewhere else. Because that's typically what happens. You get somebody who spent seven, eight, nine thousand dollars on a four wheeler, and now you're telling them they can't ride somewhere. Um, they're going to find some place to ride. It's just that's what happens unfortunately right. um so that's why i think that i'm glad you're thinking about this i'm glad you're considering the whole ohrv use out there um you know the horse hill i i i initially when that whole thing was uh went forward uh for town use i think a lot of people thought that that was going to be for ohrv use i mean i grew up out there i rode out there all the time um so but when that property was restricted I think that has a spillover effect. Mm -hmm. You know, people that rode out there all the time are like, all right, where's, where's some other big parcel we can ride on? And they might have started to gravitate toward Greater Woods or other locations that they shouldn't be riding. Um, so I think it's good that this, there's at least there's a plan in, in, in place where people can ride out there in Greater Woods. And I think if these people have a good trail system where they can ride out there, they, they're not going to worry about they're not going to spill over somewhere else. I think they're going to stay out there and they're going to ride out there. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, <laughs> but I think for the most part, if we have a location in town, a decent trail system, the people will stay there. You know, I think they get bored with the with the conventional routes that are out there approved. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, it's just not that much fun, for, you know, because on the wide roads they get, you know, they run back and forth and. It's a big area when you're walking, when you're going 20, yeah. 30 miles an hour. It gets it's pretty small. Yeah, yeah, so they cut, you know, they cut through the woods and they yeah. go through wetland and yeah. those are bored with the, with the uh, ATV trail. And, yeah. and as you just saw when you, you know, were initially coming in, the Chestnut Hill development mm -hmm. is going to be going in. Mm -hmm. and that's right on top of their prime trails. So now the, the really good ones... Are going to be gone. Mm -hmm. So now they're going they're going to come more into our property. That's that's yeah, it's definitely a possibility. Yeah, you got a seventy plus acre, you know, seventy plus home lot that's got a dead end into that. Yeah, they're gonna have a, that's gonna be that cul de sac's gonna dead end right into that area. So right. it's gonna be a access point. I mean, when we were out there with Ken and, and the builders walking it. They were they were whipping by. Yeah, the whole time we were out there. So. <laughs> yeah no I, I, you bring up a great point that that could definitely that could happen mm -hmm. yeah uh, well. how many people in that development that are going to be moving in that development right. are going to have, have one. four oh, yeah. wheelers yeah. Yeah. there's a good potential I don't, I don't know how many homes they're talking about I missed that part of it but um, between, 70. S between 60 and 70 yeah 60 and 70 lots. there'll be a good handful of people in that group that are going to have same four wheelers or what Marty, have you yeah. same that you have as Marty Drive <laughs> Yeah. So. All right. Uh, okay. Just to clarify for the record, just in case people are watching the meeting, Horse Hill is restricted today, but if a group got together and wanted to put in a trail system or and wanted to maintain it, then there is an opportunity to do that. Just no one's actually stepped up. Well, that's good to know. Just in case, you, yeah. It yeah, was built right into the, into, the, into the original plan that was put together back in 2004 and approved by the selectmen, but no one's ever stepped up. So, okay. Well, that, that, you know what? That's that's good to know. Right. I, I didn't know that was the case. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know that snowmobiling 
yeah. I guess is, is allowed out there. It is, yeah. Um, because the snow buds and people like that have stepped up and they help with the maintenance of the trail system. And that's why that's that happens out there. So. Right. And we have somebody that's also dedicated to grooming greater woods in the wintertime. With a snow machine. With a snow machine. Yeah. Oh, good. Which is good, yeah. But the, the in the snow is when we realized we had a problem because you can really see where an ATV is going in the snow because yeah. they sink. Oh, yeah. So that's when we realized we had a pretty big problem of people going where they weren't supposed to. And, you know, that's when we ordered the signs and things like that. So we actually we discovered the problem in the winter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? We might have to address this earlier than mud season, but I certainly would like to have something in place before we get there. So. Yeah, no, I think that that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I think we have to, you know, put our heads together and, and work with the subcommittee for Greater Woods and mm -hmm. figure out how we put all this info and, and turn it into something. Okay. I don't see any action items on your side except for maybe getting an idea of when you see calls, when you think there's activity. Yeah, I can on. definitely I can work on that and let you know. Just start tracking it, you know, yeah. and, you know that yeah. way we can target the right time. Yeah, so that's something. Yeah, that's definitely something we can take care of, mm -hmm. and I can. Get in yeah. touch with you or, or Matt, whoever, and let you know. Yeah, I think if you don't mind working with Matt. Sure. So Matt has a town email address, so it's mkaren at okay. merrimacknh.gov. So, All right. Um, yeah, yeah, that. Crunch those numbers and um, yeah. get them to you. Yeah. And then, and then keep an idea on other properties, too, because you, it might be good to see if there's trends anywhere else. So that way uh, maybe everyone is only doing it on the weekends or or not and if, if someone's doing something at another property it might be worthwhile figuring out why it's different yeah because that especially if we put in a use or change things around a little bit as we mature the property we might you know all of a sudden figure out that oh crap we did this and now we're going to have this that goes with it right you know yeah the only other property in town that i would say we've had any similar issues uh, it's more shooting yeah is that piece off of back river um, the power line property there. I know yeah. that the, the fish and game, there was, I think you guys had a meeting recently. Yeah. That property out there. If I had to pick another big chunk of land in town that yeah. we've had some issues. Okay. Um, most of that shooting, but there's OHRV related complaints out there as well. And do you have any trouble down by the river at all? Down on that, off of Mass Road in that area? Um, occasionally, not, you know. Yeah, okay. You know that that's another location that we try and patrol when we have these fishing game details. But like I said, it's we're so we're so restricted in time the time we have, mm -hmm. and it's it's a quick four hours <laughs> working that detail because you know we ride for an hour, then you're loading, unloading. Yeah. So you we try and do it as best we can, but that's really I mean you've got to hit it at the right time. Mm -hmm. Literally got to hit it at the right time. Yeah. You know because I could hit Greater Woods first, I could leave there. And within an hour of leaving there, a bunch of people show up to shoot or a bunch of people show up to ride. So, um, so again, not to beat a dead horse, but the, this being having a dedicated patrol out there would be, mm -hmm. I think, beneficial. So, good. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. No problem. Thank Thanks you. For coming. Appreciate yep. it. I'll keep in touch. Yep. All right. Matt, let me know when you uh, attend the, uh, when you uh, meet with them. I like to attend. Sure. So does someone want to, I know we named you as the point person for the police and stuff like that, but does someone want to own and drive this thing to getting all the pieces put together? The what do you brochure? want me to, The brochure, yeah, just all the things. Well, I don't know. Does the subcommittee want to own this, or do we, or do we want to own it as the commission? You want to talk about it at your meeting and let us yeah. know. Yeah, I can. I can do that. Okay. You know, th there are people that are interested in doing things not out in the woods in that subcommittee. Yeah. So that would be a great thing for somebody to, you know, really. Yeah, grab benefit, a hold of. Yeah. It's someone who volunteered today, right? <laughs> 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 I, I responded to him. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I haven't looked at my email, so oh. yeah, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right thanks yeah thank you yeah. <laughs>
All right. Yeah, so why don't you let us know what comes out of your okay. meeting and, and what I'll Tomorrow night, so. Okay. And, uh, and I'll, I'll put this back on the agenda under old business for next meeting, and we can figure out what our path forward is, because before we know it, it'll be, it'll be the holidays, and before we know it, the snow's going to be gone. Boy, do we hope that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, some of us do. I, actually, I enjoy the snow for a while, but you know, by March, I'm done. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, I just want to keep this thing moving forward or else it's going to stall. Sure. You know, and then we'll lose a whole, another whole season. So. And hopefully by n our next meeting, when it's on the agenda again, we'll have the numbers so that we can actually see the, the proof that, you know, yeah. Saturday from 1 to 4 is the best patrol time. Or maybe it's something different. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. All right. Anything else on this item? So that takes us next to the Merrimack Village District and their uh, well at Mitchell Woods. So this is a project we've seen a number of times before. I know, Cindy, for you, it's a new thing. Um, are you familiar with where Mitchell Woods is? Do you? Gage, do you want to tell her where Mitchell Woods is? <laughs> I, uh, think you, Mitchell I think you know the area. <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, leave, so if you left the middle school, and you know, left Meadowland Drive and, and took a left on the on Babusa Lake Road, mm -hmm. uh, probably a little less, but a quarter of a mile on your on your right. Uh, there's Mitchell Street, and it goes down. Um, it goes down, and, and there's a we have an easement. You can see it. Easement uh, right here at the bottom of the street. So Babusa Lake Road is running running up here, and we come, we come down Mitchell. And there's an easement right there, mm -hmm. and it goes out into a uh, rather large uh, Mitchell Woods and Watson Watson's Forest is up here in Mitchell Woods on the bottom side. Okay. And this is one of the areas that we're actually uh, agreed to uh, be have a water level device installed. Uh, and that's going to be that's going to be starting this week. So oh, okay. yeah, it's, and it's going to it's. Green Ponds or no, 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 no Green Ponds. Uh, this, oh. No, here you go. This is uh, so Babuskley Road comes up and takes that right hand turn the school is right up here mm -hmm. and that is is it is it off kind of off a pet in the road or something uh, mm -hmm. it's on comes up here mitchell street is off a pat is off of babusik lake mm -hmm. that's old you flood road do, which you want me to crank up the computer and put it on the screen or, or are you good do you, do you have the do you have the, the milk No, the, the meeting. No. Yes. No, the, we, we, there's, there was another thing in your packet of the, uh, the sanitary well. There you go. That's a, there's a picture in there. So, this is Blood Road. That goes to here. Right? The Woosic Lake Road comes up. Takes that hard right hand yeah. turn. So like Madeline Bennett, this is mm -hmm. this is the circle, the, the middle school is right right here. Yeah. So if you go up right there, that's Mitchell Mitchell Road. And that's that that's our easement. Right okay. There. Yeah, so it's between Babusik and Patton Lake. Yeah, so that's our easement. Oh, that's right the here. easement coming in. That's this little that's this little chunk right there. Okay. That's a that's a walk is, uh Mitchell Woods is a tree farm. It's one of our one of our tree farms in town. So, uh, and when you go out there, it's clear. There's a cleared path, uh, a well cleared path that goes out. It's been forested a couple times. Um, as I said, there's a. They, Adam just went. They the town department just went and cleared that whole path all the way back out to uh, to what used to be a cart path that went across the stream, uh, and that's where we're going to have that water level device installed. Uh, is right at that at that point, um, but. Just before you get out to the stream, there's a kind of a sandy turnaround area, and there's you can see there's a number of test wells dug out there. There's a bunch of bunch of pipes sticking up out of the ground, and you can uh, that's where they they did all their test sampling for flow and water sampling, and that's just going to be a, a well for 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 a high water season for us, high water usage seasons. Right. Yeah. So it's not a well that that'll be pumped year round, but probably in the summertime and or whenever the system's yeah. under stress, they can draw extra water out of the well. So eventually, when they uh, there is no um, 
plan to put the well in Im immediately. Uh, I think that has to go through a uh, village district vote and all that. Uh, but they're trying to get everything in place so that way they can put all the information together and bring it to their annual meeting and get approvals. Because uh, the Merrimack Village District is a village district in the New Hampshire sense, which pretty much all the voters in Merrimack are members of the district, whether or not you're on t town water or not, if you want to call it that. And, uh, and they have an annual meeting in, at the end of March, usually the last Tuesday in March, where they vote on commissioners and they vote on major capital projects and stuff like that. So I think they're trying to get everything together so they can move forward when they have the capital money available. Because they're going to have to put a pump house in. And the pump house doesn't necessarily, necessarily have to be right where the well is. It can be you know, a few hundred yards away and they can draw the water through the ground. So. Yeah, and their initial their initial design was they were thinking of trying to get the pump house out towards the end of the easement out here, so it's off of Mitchell Street. And so that'll probably connect by pipe through the easement to the water main on on Mitchell, so. and then from Mitchell they'll have to get it all the way up to Babusik Lake Road, where it'll join the much larger main. So, yeah. so th there's infrastructure work that's going to have to be done to make this a reality, but they're trying to get all the things lined up and they realizing that it takes time to go through all the steps so so uh, you know we we met with their engineering team and we've got an idea of what they what it is they want to do and tonight's meeting is uh, they want to take this easement this sanitary protective area easement deed and bring it forward to the town council because only the town council can accept an easement on town property uh, even property that's commission uh, the commission oversees or that's been deeded to the commission because they're the only ones who can by law. So uh, so what the MVD would like us to do is to uh, recommend that the town council approve and accept the easement. Uh, and that's where I'm at at this point. So that's what I'd like to move, that we recommend uh, the sanitary uh, protective area easement deed as presented to us today uh, for our lot. And, rec and recommend the council approve and accept the easement. So, can you second it? Can we still some discussion? You, you can second it. Yeah, I'd yeah. like to second it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, I have I have only, I have two questions uh, about this, and uh, one reading through what's the proposed deed here. Um, we spoke as a commission a while ago about potentially looking at generating some trails up in this area. Uh, Mitchell Woods is the bottom half of that section. Watkins Forest is the top half. There's a number of logging roads. Uh, logging trails are already up there. And it, they're pretty, you know, pretty walkable right now without with very little work. Um, it, you read this deed and it says the sanitary protection area will be maintained in a natural state at all times except for. It says limited land clearing and terrain and alteration required for well access and construction of a pump house and activities necessary for the maintenance and production of the well. So, by accepting this, does, did we just make it that we can't we can't put trails in up there within the radius? Is it is that and that's is this the sanitary protection area is, is within that radius? But there are already trails through that sanitary protection area. I mean, they're they're already there. I, I completely understand that. Yeah. So we'll be shutting down trails. We'll be shutting down. We'll be shutting down trails. Yeah, because the it's either state law or EPA or whatever dictates that they have to have this. They have to have around a well as this protection area. Okay, because also within that protection area is going to be the. Uh, I'm ninety percent sure. I have to really kind of get the map out, but I believe that that dam and the water protection, the water level device, is going to be within that sanitary protection area. So again, now have we just limited that maintenance on that, and then putting that in? I I don't think so. Because if you don't put it, if you don't have that maintenance, that whole well could get underwater, right? So there's got to be a trail to get that to that, that would, device. That would be a hell of a dam, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that would that would be a substantial. Th right. That would be. Uh, that would be quite a feat, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, could they do that? Sure. Yeah, I mean, there's. I I suppose there's places that you're not much more than a foot or two 
at the most, uh, uh, you know, from water level now. Elevation-wise, right. And I be, yeah. I, I, I'd be surprised if you're much more than, you know, 12, 12, 16 inches, 12, 18 inches would be, and again, but that would be, right. boy, that would, I, I don't know what's on the other side of that pond well enough to know if it would, yeah. you know, if you put 18 inches on there, if it would really spill over into this Mitchell area and, and Watkins. We'd have to look at a topo about that. Because mm -hmm. I don't believe... You look at Patton Road going down. I think that's probably lower than that pond for the most part. I don't know how much higher it can get on that side. Yeah. I just think you know we're we're about to we're about to put something in. I mean, literally, you know, almost to the point of hours away. Uh, and I just want to make sure that if we do that, that's we're, we're gonna we're gonna be walking the trail the trail existing trail right now walks right through this area. The main trail, and that's something that 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 uh, PWD obviously maintains. They mow, so that's they're that they're, they're going to be allowed to do some maintenance on that, which is fine. But what does that mean now for for walking trails? I mean, we're going to have to post that and say, yeah, you can't walk here. Does, does any any area get gated or anything when they have like a just around the pump house, probably right or something? There's a gate up now. There is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, really. he, he's Not talking really. about around the no, road. No, I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know. Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, they sign. Yeah, they, when we, we asked them before, they said they're just going to, you know, they don't have, typically have issues with gatehouses, with a pump house. They just, it's a small structure with a pump in it, literally, and power to it, and it's locked up, so no one really fiddles with it. Mm. But this sanitary protection area is going to be, you know, it's going to be a line on a piece of paper. It's not. I don't think it's really going to be marked out there, is it? They're not going to go out there and and border it, so no one's going to know. I don't think there'll be a there fence. Is. Yeah, there's no one's. Yeah, there's not going to be a fence on that. I think though, it. I think there are a number of signs around some of the others. Okay. So I mean, it's a five-acre chunk, right? About five acres, something like that. Yeah, it's quite a bit. Yeah, it's five and a half acres. Yep. So, uh, 6.285 acres. I'm seeing that. He's got two oh, different. okay, so the whole, th the whole thing's going to be about 12 acres then. Because you look down here. I mean, this the is one. So th they're, 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 they're measuring the Mitchell and the Watkins Forest separately. Yeah, it's, it's even shaded differently. Yeah. Yeah, because they're two separate parcels of land. Yeah. With, yeah. So we have no oversight of, of uh, Watkins Forest. We only have oversight of Mitchell, Mitchell. Woods. Because Watkins is, th that's the, the. That's where the majority of the. Right, that's the, uh, who, who want, who want. That's the trustees of the trustees trust of the fund. Trustees of the fund, yeah, trustees of the trust fund. Because the 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 trails right now the the woods road the logging trails are crisscrossing this whole piece of property, mm -hmm. and they are substantial. I mean, if you go up on Google Earth and just look at them, you'll see you'll see them. Yeah, and they're 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 really there. So besides hunting and paintballing, what else do you have? Wa hikers and. I, I've not seen a lot of people back there. I see I've seen people back at the dam, and and people hunt on the Watkins on the uh, M Watkins Forest side. You can't you can't hunt on the Mitchell side. But and the kids pay, playing paintball. So I'm just glad that they're outside. <laughs> It, yeah, the sanitary area is the downside of having a, a well, but you you know you've mm -hmm. got to have you got to have some protection of the well because that's a public drinking supply. Right. So I mean, in re in reality, are they are they really going to stop? You know, anybody going through? I mean, are they? It's not, it's not really going to get posted. I mean. Probably the trails that exist there will still exist, um, right? I mean, 
Well, it's the same by the I mean, if, if, if it, is it going to get posted that no trespassing? They would have to post their own easement because yeah. it's their easement. We're not obligated to post it. Hmm. As you'll notice, the circle doesn't extend into the pond. Right. Because they can't tell the animals not to defecate in the water, so. Right. Or recreate. Or recreate. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no fooling around in the pond. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's a tough call giving up a chunk of land, but it's, in my opinion, it's a for lot. the greater good. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I just, I, yeah. I just, you know, yeah. and, and we know they searched. They, they tried wells all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it, you know, and, it, and this is, it's a not a bad area. I'm just saying, does it really need to be restricted to, you know, can you not allow people to walk across it? In, you know, in reality, they probably still will. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. Yes, you're all probably right, but. But here we are thinking about trails. Mm -hmm. That takes a whole lot out of what we could do in there yeah. because mm -hmm. now you're giving it, you're taking away a border too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now we'd have to like go all the way around it to make something. Yeah. Yep. Because th that's if you if you were if you go back there, I mean that trail walks in and it doesn't it doesn't walk up into Watkins until you're well into this into this area over here. Yep. I mean, that, o that opening is, you know, if you walk back, that there's that kind of opening is right here, and that's where all the trails start to go off. It's almost like they use that was almost like a landing at one time, because if you, it's actually kind of cool. If you walk if you walk back there, there was some kind of weather event or something. You, you, you've been back. You've seen that whole grove of yeah. pine trees you walk right. in, right. and they're all bent over, and, and yeah. it looks like, looks like a, you know, hundreds of them all pushed over and then come back up, and it's all in along here. So this, and they're all about the same size. They're not, you know, that was one time at clear cut. So it's a, it's an interesting area. But now, have any of the have any of the neighbors in the area come out opposed to this because of their own wells? Uh, I'm not sure there are wells out there. That's all. Uh, MVD. I think so. I know when we had him in here, he was. They were talking about they would connect to the water line that was in Mitchell Street, and then they said they might have to look at upgrading that line in order to handle the uh, the added pressure of extra water. But there is water in the street. Okay. So. Hmm. I, I, there's times when I've been back there, you know, almost daily, uh, especially last year when we were dealing with the when we, we had our trapping operation going back there. Um, we stopped and spoke to the neighbors on either side of this easement. Uh, but I've, I go and park my car there. I've never, never been approached. One, yeah. twice. I've s twice, I've s twice people have, you know, caught up with me in the woods or whatever. And, but never had anybody come up. What are you doing? Who are you? Maybe they see the same car, so they're not really worried about it, you know, and they don't want to talk to a guy in waiters or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, It's a, it's a it's a quiet it's a nice quiet small neighborhood, and it's they don't really seem to be concerned about activity down there. Any more discussion on the uh, the motion? So we have to we we can only accept this or on a, or not accept it uh, right straight up and down. We can't. Uh, we can ask if you want. I mean, I, 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 all I, all I know is it's been through legal review. The right. town attorney reviewed it. Merrimack Village District Attorney reviewed it. If we were to change the language, you'd have to go through review again. I would be in favor of adding some wording saying with trails or something. Yeah, I, I just well, I don't. But again, I but I don't want to cause them problem if, if you know if there's some federal stipulation that we just don't know about that says you can't have trails in you know through a you know protected sanitary area I, I know you can do forestry activities because they yeah. do them on the other right, that's what's properties. Yeah, listen, there's limited Over forest activity so I'm like why can't you walk through it a limited land clearing yeah. is 
seriously more impactful <laughs> than a hiking trail. Right. Yeah, cause understood. But it's, it's the people, though. They don't want the people near the well. They're afraid of, of acts of vandalism or terrorism. Right? Yeah. You, They're not putting up a fence, and we're still going to allow people in there? You, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, no, I would say it's, it's just... We already have an established trail. It, well, not established, but I mean, there's a there's a pretty. You could drive. You could drive your car. I could drive my car all the way back, almost all the way back to that dam mm -hmm. on that road. It's that big. It's that wide. It's that clear. Yeah. You know, not my, my car, not a truck, but my car. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it just it seems silly to say no. You can't walk on it. I mean, it's a great. It's a great little parcel. It's close. It's you know, there's not any parking or anything, but it's uh. A neat, it's a neat little parcel, and uh, I just would like to not restrict, not, not limit the amount of trails we can put on it. So I, I'm, I'm in favor. I'm certainly in favor of doing this. I just would like okay. to so know if we can. Well, the other option then is to uh, move to table the item to the next meeting when, when we can have more information. When do they need? When do they need this back by? Oh. They wanted to, they wanted to move it forward, but if we're not ready to move forward with it, then we're not ready to move forward. Well, and also, like you said, you want to make sure that we could get to the uh, the beaver pipes and do maintenance on them if needed. Yeah, because I mean, this is this is uh, I don't know if you could really call that an activity necessary for the maintenance and the protection of the well. Mm -hmm. I because. Mean, Pond is creating groundwater, <laughs> so uh, you know it, it's having a large pond there is not going to be. I don't think really damage the well. I mean, it, it fl it's flowing pretty well. It's not really stagnant water. It's not like it's the, it, you know, it's become a stagnant pond. Okay, so you want to have the vote, or you want to move to table before I call the vote? I I'd, I'd like to have I'd like to have some acknowledgement of the fact that we can have a trails some trails there or even use the existing trails. I'm also in favor of that. Yeah. A little more due diligence. So did I hear you say you want to move to table? Yes. Yes. Who who, like who, who made the motion and who seconded? I'll move the table. <laughs> I'll move the table as. Uh, would you move the table the motion or do we move the table? The, yeah. Table you made a motion. motion. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move the table to motion that, that was for the approval of the of the deed. I'll second that. Okay. Right. Move to table is not a debatable move a motion. So, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes five zero zero. Really simple. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just we made a motion, so we had to follow the. the so. It's fine. I, I'm happy to we'll, we'll get some more info, and it's just the way it is. We'll see you next time. All right. So what I ask from you then is, I know you s you said a few things, mm -hmm. but send me an email in the next couple of days as yep. to what you'd like to learn about, okay. and and uh, I'll request that information. And that goes for all of you. All right. Let me know this week what you want more information on. That way we can be prepared at our next meeting, and give them enough time to gather data. Because it is, this involves DES and DES rules, and there may be a rule on this. Right. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, my memory isn't clear, but I remember when the gentleman was here talking to us about what a typical well would look like and what a pump house would look like and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um we said there are trails out there. Yeah, at that time, he didn't seem to have problems with that. Right. So it could be a matter of, you know, it's just not written in there, but it's a, it's an acceptable, you know, use around a well. Yeah. It'd be good to have that clarification before we make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a problem. I only walked you through the legal steps, mm -hmm. so that way when I'm not here, you'll know what to do. <laughs> I think that was a first. M move to table. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Good one>. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Gage. <laughs> sure. Okay. So I will assume if I haven't heard from you uh, by Sunday night that you don't have any questions beyond what I've kind of heard, you know, you know, maintenance activities and walking trails. So. Uh, maintenance activities particular to the water device, water level device. Well, we, okay. okay, right, right. The water control maintenance, right? Right. Okay. All right, uh, anything else on that agenda item? So while we have Gage before he gets called to another meeting, uh, so I put in beaver and water control activities. I tried to leave this agenda item very broad. Uh, <laughs> All right, so, uh, wait. Yep. You done? Yep. Okay. So um, the beaver solutions was on site uh, last Thursday with, uh, with GZA. They met with um, PWD and they went and walked uh, the sites that we, we put on the agenda list as, as high priority and they also walked the site that we learned about uh, after the fact that, that um, the water department is doing some of their own mitigation work and so they, they walked uh, those four sites I think they also went up to uh, Hanson Road where we originally the beaver we had thought the beaver had moved on apparently they've moved back so um, they went and looked at a number of sites and and came up with uh, what their conclusions were and uh, verified their verified you know Matt Mike uh, verified his prices and, and one of the things that we were thinking about on, on Greens Pond when they review they went down and reviewed it um, Adam had a very different take on what the problem was and so they were able to change their focus a little bit and they're going to continue in that it's a still a high priority area and they're going to continue their He's going to continue his work on that, and it's going to be uh, a little bit different than we initially thought. But the price is going to be the same, so that's a that's a good that's a good thing. Um, they're starting; they're going to be starting next week or this week, which is probably Wednesday or Thursday, and installing in some of those areas. And they're going to get going. I'm going to get I'm be getting from GZA a list of the you know, they're starting at Mayflower, obviously. Okay. Um, that I guess the letter did go out. Okay. Uh, it, it, Seems as far as I know, it went out. I don't believe we've heard anything back yet. Um, we did have one little bump in the road here, that uh, Level Street and Kathy Street area. Mm -hmm. um, oh, before you leave Mayflower, is he going to put in his his height gauge or something to tell us the, the water? I level? have not spoken to Adam since. Okay. So we we've asked him to do that, and he said he was going to. So I'm. Right, because no, I've not spoken to him about it yet. Right, I didn't see it yesterday. I went out and took a look. Okay. I snapped a few pictures so we could have the baseline before the activity started. Okay. So. Yeah, they're they they're measuring. It's a little bit. They think it's around a foot of water yeah. level that they're going to change from the existing water now to the bottom of the beaver box that's in there. So they think that's just about a foot, and that's what they're going to aim for, for uh, a level. Mm -hmm. Until today. <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Three feet. The, yeah. Well. But again, but you know the dam, the, the water's flowing on top of the dam, so okay. it shouldn't be it shouldn't be much more. The, the dam looked like well, it looked like it's been worked on. People have been removing pieces of the dam, and the beaver have been putting things back. Yeah, so um, I, I I believe that has been happening. Yeah, and but at the direction of the town. Yeah, so yeah, to, to keep fine. that to keep to keep it from, we knew we were getting into some rain, so they said you know work on that to keep it yeah. level. Um, so that that's going to be that's going to be I think item that's obviously item number one. Um, then they're going to go into Mitchell Woods. They did go up and look at what we found was a new area that they were having some problems with over in Kathy Street, Level Street area. Um, and it was an area that uh, was not recommended as a high priority area because they didn't uh, GZA didn't have didn't see what DPW was saw as a problem and they didn't hit so there was not a lot of people around there not a lot of uh, assets around there for, for damage so the uh, I guess the department's been going in there and doing some of that work themselves and uh, they've since now turned that over to 
to this project and that's going to be done uh, as part of a part of a project with through us and through the water department so they're going to get it he's going to be getting us some north quotes on you know following up on some of the other areas so but it's going forward it's short the short answer is it's going forward we're going to be uh, again starting this week and we should start to see some uh, hopefully some abatement for uh, the Millwood Pond and uh, that area so. all right so Han Hanson Drive Hanson Drive is one of the areas that they feel um, they can install fences much later into the season than they can with the pipes mm -hmm. so um, he's going to get us a quote on installing some fences up in the Hanson Drive to protect those those uh, culverts a little bit and allow them to be free flowing. Uh, the one area we have an issue with is the Natticook Road extension over behind Joey Road. Yeah. The you know we and we spoke about this that the way the land comes into those culverts uh, it's very tight and he. Beaver Solutions is, on, is concerned that once you put the trapezoid in, it's going to be right up along, along those muds. It's really not doing anything other than creating a flat dam out in front of it. So he is asking the town to remove, you know, before he goes in there, he'd like us to get the town to go in there and remove some of that mud on either side of the culvert. And I've asked Tracy to look into the, whether we need to get a wetlands permit or not. And uh, so she's, this just happened today, so she's not, yeah. got not has not gone far, but um, dependent on what we need to do for permitting or if we even need to do permitting. Uh, I'm assuming that we could agree the, that that type of work needs to be done and we should go ahead and let the town do that work and remove that, wor remove that mud so they can get the uh, beaver devices installed. Everyone seems agreeable to that. I mean, it would be uh, not a, not a lot of work. It'd be some, you know, short work. A single guy in a backhoe probably may be done with it in an hour or two. So, okay. so the questions I have in that area are related to the fact that there's multiple beaver dams as you go out there. Right. I mean, there's there's probably seven layers of dams. Or, or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we, we ran across three right. of them really quickly. In the, in the first 100 yards, there's three different levels of dams, and each one of them is successive, successively another 18 inches higher. So there's a lot of water being held back by beaver dams, yeah. uh, which also for the, water to, for the wastewater and sewer line is causing issues with the water going over, to the, top, over the top of their pipes that they have an easement for. Mm -hmm. We're going to control the culverts, but that's not going to control their issues. Right. Right. So that, that's, I think that's one of the things that I, I, I have not spoken with Tracy, and this happened Thursday, and yeah. I've been, yeah. uh, I was gone, I, I left Friday, and I just got back late last night, so I've mm -hmm. not really spoken to anybody yet. But uh, I believe that's what some of the further quotes are going to be on, is what other work needs to be done out there to make that, keep that situation at bay. Yeah. So uh, there's some private land over there that's some, that's also some issues that we're going to have to deal with, right. uh, you know, permission-wise. So there's a, there's a bigger bigger project going on over there. Okay. So, but it, it is in the scope of what they're looking at then. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because as we know, um, the wastewater folks went ahead and took their own activities. Yep. So. Yeah, which so that, yeah, which I think we've finally got some more information on today. Yes, yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. So again, that's all. That's all uh, information I, I have forwarded that on to GZA. Uh, Tracy has offered to update the database, mm -hmm. so we can start keeping track of what's been done and where. Yeah. And so she's going to try to figure out a way to compile that into, uh, into the database. Okay. Uh, overall, the, the they were very happy. She was very happy, and Adam, I guess, was they were had a good productive day uh, really felt they got a lot accomplished learned a lot from each other yeah. uh, they were very happy to have uh, uh, Rick Seymour had gone along with them and his perspective and his historic knowledge of what we've gone was uh, very helpful so okay. overall it was a very, apparently a very good day because I think in the long run we want to help the town 
overcome yeah. these issues, yeah. make them less costly for everyone, right. and w let critters be critters. <laughs> so, everybody, everybody just gets to stick with their strengths. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else today? Uh, so, I had started a conversation with uh, Matt Chevenel with on Lions Road which just happens to be right next to the Kathy Street, Level Streets, that same water mm -hmm. uh, stuff. I asked, once I realized that the wastewater folks were doing stuff at Kathy and Level, I emailed Matt and said, Matt, let me collect more data about what's going on in the bigger picture. And I kind of stopped the conversation about getting them engaged in looking at Lions Road. Uh, the thought being that uh, they own Lions Road and therefore uh, they probably have some costs to bear here when it comes to doing it so or at least I wanted to see where they were at with that um, should I wait and let uh, Tracy and GZA do a little more fact gathering around Kathy Street and Level Street to see if there's maybe uh, a, a different way we want to approach Lions Road can you ask that question yep. for me Or do we think you know that the two are separate enough where we can deal with them separately and take the recommendation we already got? So uh, I um, think I think we're going to have to educate the um, the 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 maintenance director for for the school district as to what's been going on. So I may need some Tracy time or, or your time to to explain things a little bit if I if I can't uh, answer their questions satisfactorily. I'm trying not to stick you in the middle of it because I know you've got your hands full. Yeah, I, mean, I, I obviously can do. Um, I obviously can do. Uh, you know, with enough notice, I can be available. So okay. um, Tracy's. Uh, you know, obviously her time is, is not free, so we right. just I want to call on her in town when, and you know as infrequently as we need right. to uh, make sure we have it for, for a longer period of time. So, but we can. Uh, I can certainly get this information to her and find out what's going on. Yeah, you know, ask her, ask her what she thinks our take is for that spot before I go ahead and go much further with the school district. So, because I'd hate to get them go walking down the road one way and then turn around and say, oh, well, we yeah. learn more and no, let's, maybe this is better. So, and I don't think Lions Road is an emergency situation, so. Did you get your message to come? Yeah, they're on item seven. We're we're on as item nine. So oh, okay. I said, uh, yeah, probably gonna get, get get over there pretty quick. So, all right. Anything else on beavers? I will put a similar agenda item in our next meeting, so that way we have a placeholder to discuss things, and where we can make financial decisions if we want to. Okay. All right. Sound good? Yep. If you have anything quote wise, you know, send it when you got it. If it comes down to it. So. Absolutely. Okay, uh, that takes us out of old business to new business, uh, and that is the survey from the New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commissions. Did everyone get a chance to take a look at it? Yes. Do we want to answer it separately? Do you? Um, I think they were looking for one answer from the whole commission. By the way, I didn't give you the second page, I realized, because the second page just asks for names and addresses of, of the membership uh, to see if you want to get the newsletter and all that. Uh, I can include that if you want it in the response, or you can separately go online and register yourself to get their newsletters. I thought the, that's, I thought the second avenue was probably better. was better, right? Yep. So. So then that really just leaves us the eight, the eight questions you see in the front. So uh, again, uh, I think they would take the answers separately if we wanted to, oh. but we can put them all together right now. So what's your thought, Matt? I don't know. They're asking for one. I think we should give them one. OK. OK, number one, question one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in favor of uh, the field training sessions that they're speaking about. Yeah. And uh, I 
arena they've been talking about for a couple of years. Um, but I haven't seen one yet, so it would be great if they did those. Field train. Oh. How, how different is the one that they do in our town on Beaver? Is that. Is it. That might be. Was that done by NHACC? And Cooperative Extension. Yeah. 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 Great. I'd like to see more yeah. of that. Yeah, because Emily Lord was there and everything, right? Yeah. Great. Because that, I mean, that is a number seven is. We're struggling with ideas for this. What yeah. topics would you like to see? But I just think having more of them would be great. Okay. They did have a. Um, they have a summer. Se I think it was a summer series. I think that was one of the last of their summer series. Um, and that's kind of a new. Yeah, they did three. Of three. Them. Yeah. yeah. Was there only three? I thought there was. No, I guess it was only. It was only I think three. there was three. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I I I, I echo Matt's uh, sentiment. This is that I I because that day that day went well. Uh, we got some great reviews from that, and uh, I mean I think people were really. You know, it was. I granted it was not. It was geared towards conservation commissions but it was open to the public so we got we got a great deal of uh, just public participation with that which was neat yeah we did yeah. yeah all right so do you want to combine one and seven and answer seven at the same time sure mm -hmm. any topics i think having like moose wood or you know a, a, a wildlife biologist come out and uh, you know, help you identify certain things, just like some general knowledge things, like the bark's falling off this tree and why. You know, just being out in the woods and being able to identify things like a wildlife biologist can, yeah. I think would be very helpful look, to look for signs of infestation or something. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or trouble areas in the water and. Yeah, we did. Uh, you know, see, a few years ago, uh, we did we had our we had our we we're supposed to be an annual thing. We haven't done a second one yet. We had our pool, our vernal pool party. I don't know if you guys remember that. We took uh, we started up in the we had it started up they had a middle school and uh, it was it was uh, Moosewood Ecological came up and uh, and walked the you know kids and parents or whoever um, through the vernal pools along right off the Gateway Trail and. Uh, that I thought it was great, and it, it, we got we got that one class of kids were were the ones that were interested in are now seniors in high school. So it was quite a few years ago. I'm thinking about it now. Um, they're the ones that showed you know interest in the water sampling, and so it had an effect. And that was just yeah. a one day a one day thing. Um, you know, Jeff Littleton scared the bejesus out of him with his big beard and everything, which was kind of kind of funny, but <laughs> they li they liked him by the end of the day. So. <laughs> but that was a, that was a great you know and we we sponsored that ourselves I mean that was that was an MCC thing so um, items like that would be uh, would be super I mean that was that was a very effective very effective day because we did the same thing with them when they did the transects in the winter so those are those are those outdoor classes are uh, are really interesting especially if we can get the kids to go so w would we be interested in in sponsoring and funding things like that as a commission. I, I'd definitely be interested in looking mm -hmm. into that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 We've got some. Uh, we've got some great great property in town. Some unique property in town. Uh, so I think it'd be worthwhile to show it off a little. Okay. Yeah. I do too. I think the educational opportunity is would be awesome. So. Especially if we concentrate on on our property, so we could learn a lot about our own property. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, it's, it is. It's it's true. Mm -hmm. Selfishly, but right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if we walk past a black gum tree, I'm not sure I'd be able to identify it, but I'm sure someone could. Mm -hmm. The right people. So. And I would vote for the weekends. <laughs> so that was the next thing. Okay, time of day, weekends. Yeah. yeah. Just because yeah. I know in the last um, sessions that came out. There was quite a few I'd like that I wanted to go to, but okay. you know I only have so much vacation time. 
that yeah. I can take off yeah. of work. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, that being said, how you know when we get into summertime mm -hmm. too? I mean, so evenings would yeah yeah uh, would, yep. okay so as mm -hmm. long as you know daylight hours are, are well that's a good point yeah because yeah. yep. there were certain you know um, you know, like Matt Tars he's a birder I mean he's he wanted to come out and do um, you know we found some really interesting things and he wanted to look at it but that those are things that are great you know kind of dusk time right. frame yes which in the summertime can be you know eight eight o'clock right. You know, so it's late enough to, mm -hmm. to do that. So we also have a birder on our conservation commission. Yeah, we do. So we may be able to tap her. We have a picture of her with her binoculars, yeah, don't we? Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another topic that I'd like to see yep. is mapping. Oh. <laughs> And if that, you know, is an evening during the week type classroom course. Yeah. I think the NHLPC one is during the day. It's tomorrow. Yeah. And I w initially had the day off, but now I, I, have to, I have to work, so I can't go to it. Right. Unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're being summoned. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so that's um, getting back to number one. How can we improve? I'll tell you. I see a big improvement with just the new staff. Because mm -hmm. yep. you know we pipeline thing that's going on and just other things just the, 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 the you can now get Twitter feeds and Facebook and all that sort of stuff so there certainly have grasped so social media so I th I'm just pleased to see the, the differences even though I'm not a social media person but it's nice to know that that's available so. has anyone ever used the members forum section on their on their website no where you can log in and you can check and see what other members are asking questions about and stuff like that. You can get an account. So I don't know if anyone's ever played with it. I, I have set myself up and then I just only so much you can do. So, okay. All right, uh, number two, if NHACC offered the following services in the future, at an optional, additional, res uh, reasonable cost, would you use them? A conservation land use attorney. Check. <laughs> GIS analysis and mapping. Yeah. You need to say it. <laughs> <laughs> conservation planner. Yeah, we've already done that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Other? I, well, sure, other. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wetland scientist, wi wildlife biologist. We already have a lot of that available to us through through yeah. cooperative extension. Um, you know, and, and I mean, they're county forest or you know, you know, county biologists. I mean, that stuff's ac accessible to us. So okay. I don't know if we need further services. I mean, it's mm -hmm. okay. Trail building maintenance. We have Matt for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have a s if they have somebody with a strength, but I don't. I don't you know. Yeah. yeah. We have a map. <laughs> we have a map. Well, you can even hire someone now to yeah. do it, Ooh. right? There's a company that does it now. Yep. Give Matt some time. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's second business? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, easement monitoring and stewardship. Yeah. So I, I was reading, as, I mean, we do our little walk every year through know our properties and is that is that what they mean yeah they're gonna go do it for us right would, that they, a thing? would they contract this to somebody is that th is that what they're talking about it's tying the themselves with to somebody and contracting that person out to different commissions that or yeah maybe maybe they maybe they're looking to to do that I don't know they're looking to see if there's an interest, I guess. Get someone to pay me to take a walk. 
I don't have enough time to take a walk. Yeah. Can I walk? Yeah. All right, so I didn't see a lot of yeses yeah, I, I on that one. Yeah, I'm not sure okay. I would right. see the need for that press. So they have a monthly electronic newsletter. Would you be interested in receiving a twice yearly longer form glossy paper or newsletter magazine? No. So I think there'd be costs associated with yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking yeah. too. Especially I, I, like, they're I like the electronic version. Glossy yeah. paper and everything. <laughs> I read on my phone. Yeah. Okay. So. Are you proud of something you've done in the last few years and you'd be willing to share on the resources page of the website member section? We already have. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're doing our beaver projects. Our, little, our beaver projects on their resource website, so. Okay. So we're ahead of the curve. <laughs> do you have any specific suggestions for topics or news in our e-newsletter? Also, do you have anything that you can send us that you'd like to brag about? No, I don't have anything. No, I've, I've given them our other website, Merrimack Outdoors. Right. Oh, okay, that's good, because we're, we're ahead of the curve there, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In some ways, some other communities are catching up to us, though. And also look at our maps. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh. where it all falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How important, i.e., how much do you value NHACC legislative lobbying work, and what legislative or state administrative priorities would you like us to focus on or improve? I think it's very valuable what they do. And I'm sure a lot of us don't even know the extent of yeah. the value. <laughs> But I, I know they're working on things that I, I, I read stuff like, oh, I didn't know where, we I didn't yeah. know it was coming up. And I know Nick spends a lot of time yep. Yep. on that, and he's done some great work that, you know, I'm not sure we all understand exactly what it is, but right. that's very important. And I think for us to make suggestions, th they know what they are doing. Yeah. I don't see that there's anything glaring. I don't know if somebody else has. Okay. So keep the focus the way they've been doing it already. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we did seven, eight. What are you doing, have you done to get new members, particularly young people, kids, students, families involved in the public interested in your work? Is it working? I think the Vernal Pool Party yeah. And the forestry operation out on the logs to lumber. Yeah, logs to lumber. Yeah, it's a very good. We need to. We need to. That's the thing is, we need to be able to find some way to make that, you know, quasi repetitive. And we every and couple we, of years. And, and we had the the raptor sessions. We did the raptor. Yep. And even even you know even about that, we've paid for a woman to come into the middle school and teach about raptors. Yeah. And the owl. We had the owl lady in. Which was cool because she wears big round glasses. Oh. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. You know, I, m I met the uh, Autobahn Society on top of uh, Miller State Park there. Yeah. You know, South Pack, Minadnock. Yeah. And they're up there from September to November um, with scopes and stuff uh, tracking the migration of uh, all kinds of raptors. Yeah. They had like a list of like 16 different raptors and. And, uh, you know, this is, I like, I wonder if we should, as a conservation commission, like, extend that information out or something to, yeah, I, I, I never know they were up there I mean, until I ran into them. Oh. They're the very excited. Those are the kind of links and things that we can put on our website and for people to, if we, if there's a place to go drive them to, say, hey, you know, this is, here's the information about it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a resource also. Mm -hmm. But yeah, one of the, yeah. I, think, I think one of the things I'd like to record on there, too, is the fact that we were getting engaged as much as we can with the scouting. Uh, for for projects and within the woods, which is uh, you know trail projects and you know building and whatever bridges and outlooks, that's been a, I think a pretty successful relationship. Mm -hmm. you know, it's worked out well for us, and it's been and we've been helping them, you know, through their through their work. So yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. I have to, uh, I have to go. Yeah. I, I 
did no real correction for the minutes. And, uh, there was an extra S in there on one word, so. Yeah, I didn't catch it then. I missed that. One for the overflow and one for the drain. This is overflows. Uh, 33 on page five. Page five. That was my only. Uh, that was my only real correction. Okay. There's only one, there's only one overflow. This one drain. All right. So. Great. And the other, I, I had one other quick question on this, uh, or quick item on. Where is that? Where's your pretty picture? Can you go back to we the other picture on there? Th this. Uh, the, yeah, so yeah, that's next on our agenda, the Everett Turnpike maintenance application, yeah? The outlet, is there some reason that we're not sloping that? Is that, that's just a drop off, which? Well, that's what they're correcting. That's what they're correcting. Right, so they're they're gonna, it's going to be a bermed, okay. Yeah, they're correcting all those things. Right. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, I had a quick, so on this item, the Everett Turnpike maintenance application, I had a quick email exchange with Kyle, and he said that he's reviewed the project and didn't see any issues with it. He said they're making things better. He said it's not near any of their structures and it's not near any wetlands that, that, that are, you know, continual running water situations. So. Okay. Great. So, so I just brought it to your attention because it came to my attention and I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of it. So that's my only intent with that. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Yep, thanks. thanks. So you did. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So at 8.40, Gage had to leave the meeting. All right, um, ATV activity on Horse Hill Nature Preserve. When I, I put this on the agenda uh, before I attended the Horse Hill Nature Preserve committee meeting, the person who alerted it said the email was old, but yet Matt has seen some activity. Have you, is it continuing or was it just a one time only? Um, it, it was the, the weekend before, so it was last weekend, not, not yesterday, the Sunday before. Yeah. Um, there's new. There's a new closure to the power line easement heading east across Natticook Road. Um, it appears to be a neighbor that dropped a couple of trees across the um, power line easement that allows access to Gilmore Memorial Forest. Yeah from Natticook Road. Because that is blocked off, I believe the person on the ATV decided, well, I'm going to go across the other way, which is into Horse Hill. Um, we've repli repeatedly replaced the sign saying no motorized vehicles, uh, and it's been shot once, which is very alarming since there's a house about 50 yards from the yeah. sign um, and it's been removed every other time the last time I put it in with uh, star head you know lags and it was still just obliterated so we have an issue there okay. that's another one of those here you need the police involved or something and, and, and that's a hard one because I mean that was a Sunday morning when and I was busy I didn't have time to go tracking anybody down and um, I mean even e even just calling and reporting it to the police unfortunately it's not that easy you're required to meet them and give a lot of information and, and sometimes you know when you have somewhere to be, that's just not possible. So, mm -hmm. that's it. But we still have problems at a place that we we talk like we don't have problems. Yeah, a lot of times, but we do. I know at the committee meeting they had thought that they would try to spend some more time keeping an eye on it to let us know if it was continuing or not. Again, we're all volunteers and we do what we can, right? So, okay. Not much more I can say on it, so, because I know I can't volunteer to be out there patrolling every Sunday morning. 
So, uh, I've got a couple of other items that didn't make it on the agenda that are that would fall under this area. Did you um, ever get a letter from Piscataqua Land Trust? Or not yet. Not yet. Okay. All right. Did I say that right? Is it land or is it land conservancy? Land Conservancy. Okay. PLC. All right. Uh, I forward you all a copy of the 2015 uh, meeting calendar. Anyone have any concerns or questions? I pretty much follow the exact same model we used this for this year, which was almost the exact same model we used for the year before, which gives us two meetings in January, but they're not the first and third. It's the first and fifth, I think, or something. It, there's a spread out there because of... Uh, because uh, of the holiday in January. And then there's only one meeting in February because again, there's the holiday in February. Martin Luther King Day, I believe it is in February, right? Where did I get it backwards? Is it Martin Luther in January? I forget, so. And then President's Day on the other end, I, so whatever. So but that's what we did last year. There's only one meeting in September because the first Monday is a holiday and we don't meet on holidays. Uh, and there's only one meeting in July because Fourth of July weekend, that whole time frame, that first two weeks of July, most people take vacations or other things are happening. So we haven't had an early July meeting in a few years, and I kept it the same way. So that's kind of the highlights. And sound agreeable to everybody? Sounds fine. Yep. It does. Good. Okay. All right. So I will have Sue post it and start uh, reserving the, this room and everything else. Okay. <coughs> Um, the natural gas pipeline, which has been in the newspapers, I've been seeing it in a few different places. The union leader's done a few different articles on it lately. Uh, the pipeline we spoke about at a previous meeting, the one that was supposed to traverse through the western and northern part of Massachusetts all the way to Drake it, they're now saying they're going to run it up into New Hampshire and run along a lot of the power lines. In so doing, the, this proposed route takes it straight through Merrimack through Severance Bridge Road, uh, near Bates Road, uh, Peasley Road, Horse Hill Nature Preserve, crosses the street, gets out near Gilmer Hill Memorial for Forest, there's probably the MVD, it takes it uh, near the new mall, uh, takes it across Daniel Webster Highway, uh, and then across the river into Litchfield or Londonderry. I forget what's out there. Probably through Litchfield and then Londonderry. Like, is, is there some official, like, every time I read something about it, it's always changing. Yeah, and it, it is always changing. In fact, the informational meeting that they're supposed to have tomorrow night got canceled. It's no longer, it's not happening in Hollis uh, because I think uh, they're rethinking, you might say. And they're trying to come up with another route because uh, if you read through the newspaper articles, it, it appears that some people in Massachusetts have been successful at convincing them not to go through their town. So instead of going through their town, they're going to come through our town. <laughs> uh, if it comes through that power line easement area, it's going to cut through some people's homes. Uh, especially there's a home, there's a property, I should say, on Peasley Road with that power line easement before it enters Horse Hill goes right through someone's property. Yeah. Uh, so, and I'm sure there's other situations where it's gonna cut through private property and those folks need to know this. Uh, they already have power lines over their heads but now their soils and ground and everything's gonna get cut up to put a line in the ground, which is a new easement. Uh, there's money to be made if you're gonna have any, if, you know, you'll make some money for them doing it. It'll also have an impact, um, I shouldn't say it will, it will potentially have an impact on your property value. Uh, so it may limit what you can do on your own property and all that too. And it may limit what we can do on our property, which we have some limitations already because of the PSNH easement. But now we might have a big pipe going right through Long Pond. So, and other places through the sand pit, the place that we've spent so much time trying to preserve and bring back to a natural state. You think, uh Great Blue Herons don't like hikers, mm -hmm. but they really don't like uh, gas pipes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and all the construction and everything mm -hmm. that's gonna go on running all that equipment in there. So, uh, 
yeah, it impacts, you know, a couple of our properties and, and our people, our neighbors. So I don't know where the town is on this. Last talking to the town uh, manager and email exchange, it was MVD who was watching it because the only part in town that was going to be impacted was MVD property. Uh, doesn't look like that's the case anymore. And I'm not sure where the town is now, whether they're rethinking, whether they're waiting, because everything is just kind of being tossed out. There's a lot of stuff that's in flux. They may, may want to wait. Uh, but uh, we did get reached out by New, New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commissions. Nick wanted to know if we'd be interested in going to a regional meeting just to learn more about it. Uh, I think we should. I would definitely so, like to go. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the chair of the Milford Conservation Commission said that they would host the meeting. Uh, because it, ideally you'd want to get it so that way as many people could participate in po as possible. And <coughs> Milford's probably about the middle, middle ground mm -hmm. from what they're talking about because I think it goes all the way out to Winchester, is it? Or is it Westchester that's all the way to the west? I don't know. But so I think it would go down through Londonderry, down to Pelham, and back to Drake. It, so, but, so and that's just this current proposed route. That doesn't mean it's going to go any further or it's going to change or not. But seems that going through power line easements is something that they're seeming to favor right now. So, because you have the similar issues, you have to keep it cleared. You know, you have to be able to have it maintainable. You have to be able to get to it. Yeah, it's like a twofer, you know. Right, it's a twofer. That's, I think that's what they're thinking, least impact. So, but whatever, more to come. Uh, so I will um, let Nick know that we uh, definitely want to attend mm -hmm. if there's a meeting available. They, they don't have a final decision date yet? No, it's, I think it's, my understanding is it won't come till 2016. But the final decision? Oh, yeah. yeah. FERC, whoever FERC is. Federal, whatever. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Yeah, so I something. did sign up for that and yeah. lots of emails. <laughs> yeah. Well, because every time somebody posts a comment or yeah. with them, you get an email. So Massachusetts, I've seen a, look, a lot, most of the comments are from Massachusetts yeah. residents mm -hmm. opposing it. Yeah. But there's also been um, New Hampshire um, residents that have written on there. I haven't read any comments yet that are in favor of it, but keep checking okay yeah so keep us surprised because I I don't have the time to follow it all that closely yeah and this will happen yeah. you know I mean I, I, it, I don't know if it's recent or because mm -hmm. I just signed up so I don't know if all of a sudden there's a push you know do it now yeah but yeah I'll let you know if it's okay and then the last thing that came up at the Horse Hill meeting is um, they want some more of the blue signs and Matt, we're limited on number of blue signs that we have left. Mm -hmm. The blue triangles. Yeah, triangles. I probably have like at least, well, not that many, but a dozen, 20 at my house in the time I went out with you. Yeah, that, that doesn't go. Yeah, that they, doesn't go very they, far. They, they probably <laughs> need a, a hundred or more, right? Yeah. yeah, they're talking marking every trail that's not loop trail right. with a blue triangle. So, I mean, w we use them for red maple. Mm -hmm. um, we still probably have just enough to do the school property left, which we haven't marked at all yet. Yeah. Uh, but we did Brickyard. And uh, we may need some more, too, at Greater Woods because there's an Eagle Scout now that wants to put a trail in. And he's thinking it would be a, a B use trail. Mm -hmm. So, drilled rock also is, blue. we we marked more than half of our trails with blue, yeah. and uh, I don't remember how many we ordered of blue, but we'll probably need that over again. Did, did the bridge get put in? I'm just curious. Right. Just not on drilled rock? Not yet. No. no. So I I dug up the quote for the last time we had the ones done. There was a. He mm -hmm. let me get. There was a one-time setup fee for $60 to set up to cut the shapes. 
and then each of the shapes cost sixty dollars and we got how many do, do, can you recall how many of the triangles we got no i think we were estimating what a couple of hundred in a sheet or something like that or do we think it wasn't that much i don't remember all right so I guess what I would like to find out from you all is, is should I ask to try and get quotes to have more triangle, blue triangles made up? Yes. Yep. Okay. Do you want me to try and get town staff to help do all that legwork, or does someone here want to do that? The company? Yep. Contact the company, get quotes. Is, is, would we need to contact additional companies, or could we use the same vendor? I think we can use the same vendor because the price is not going to be that high. I don't see it going over a few hundred dollars. I, well, I can reach out to the vendor. While we're doing that, is there any other that we might need? Good question, yeah. Right. Um, well, feel free to get quotes on whatever you think we might need. Okay. All right? Sh so should I find out how many blue we got last time and try to go for about the same number of blue <laughs> this time? Um, Cause that seems like the one that they're going to need the most of. Right. Yeah. Um, they're going to need a lot of blue. Yeah. Because yeah. you've got all the trails except for the main loop trail. Right. I, th I think they're going to need a lot of them. Yeah. Probably just as many as we had for Greater Woods. Probably just, which means you need double that amount then, because you're going to want, you're going to want some spares. Okay. Yeah. And they, they're like all, almost all blue trails, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you've got the quarry trail, you've got rocky trail, you've got... Yeah, I, I did quarry trail is done. Yeah, okay. I did that in blue already. All right. Uh, but it was replacing old blue paint. Yeah. So it was, you know, it was rather easy to, to do. Right. And I didn't go... Hog wild, right? I didn't, yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't put an, a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. um, I gave Richard, a, a volunteer with Horse Hill... Well, I gave him the white ones, and when I was out there this weekend, he had done a great job putting them up already. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so we'll take a look at our stock and then get quotes for what you think, and I can uh, agenda this for the next meeting if you can get quotes for me to, sure. to do. Yeah, I think the purchasing policy will allow us to go back to him because we've already priced it out before. Okay. And we went with the lowest bidder. And and I don't see any reason why that's going to change unless we get the quotes and they're remarkably different. Right? So. Okay. That's all I have under other business. Anyone else have anything under other business? I do. Okay. Um, w Wasserman Park. Um, there are a number of trails out there now. Um, there are three trails in particular that are well, uh, well marked and well used by folks that park in the Wasserman Park area. Um, there are Quarry Trail that takes you into Horse Hill. Uh, there's the Bearfax Trail that takes you from Natticook Road to Natticook Pond. And then there's what they call the fitness trail. And it's called the fitness trail because an Eagle Scout years ago put fitness stations along this trail. And it's a loop trail that crosses, or a lollipop trail. It goes out, does a circle, and then comes back the same route. Um, and it crosses Bearfax down towards Natticook Pond. Lake. Lake, sorry. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, a, a lot of the uh, fitness structures and posts have have you know fallen or, or become uh, you know compost mm -hmm. um, just just because you know they're in a wetter area or something. But some of them are still like there's a you know push up and pull up station with a pipe up in the air, and it's still fully functional you know a number of years later. But some of them haven't made it so well. Mm -hmm. um, what I would be looking for is uh, a trail that goes in between Bearfax and the Fitness Trail 
just to sort of give you another another trail to do a loop on. So right now it's kind of like a, you know, it's quarry goes one way, Fairfax goes the other way, and then at the bottom there's the, the fitness trail with a, with a loop out here. I'd be looking to connect Fairfax trail down to the fitness trail over here so that it just sort of gives you another way to get back up into the top of the property. I, I laid it out and it's uh, much less than a mile to connect the two. Um, and it's similar in nature to quite a few other trails that are out there on the Greens Pond conservation property. Um, you know, Tim's seen those trails. It's very similar in nature. So it's not um, Quarry, Bearfax, and the Fitness Trail are, you know, six foot wide trails. They're very wide. Um, this trail would be two feet wide, much, uh, you know, much narrower in design. Target user is bikes? Yep, hikers and bikes, yeah. yeah. So yeah. The, the Greens Pond Trails, um, there are dog walkers, bikes, and trail runners. Trail runners actually love these two-foot wide trails. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's not targeted for, you know, the, the big groups that go out there together, like the, the Eagle Scout or, or the Cub Scout groups that go out there. They're sticking on Bearfax and, and Quarry and, and the Fitness Trail. Does, does anything connect, like, to from that area to, like, the back of Fidelity or...? No, um, you you have to cross the uh, Continental Boulevard to get to get there. Yeah, just very curious. Yeah. yeah. So on that property, there's no motorized use of any kind, not even snowmobiles. Just so everyone's aware, and that's by deed. So. Okay. Uh, I don't see any issue with it. You're, you're doing any water crossings? No. Okay. Um, crossing any stone walls? No. Okay. There is a stone wall in there, beautiful stone wall, mm -hmm. and we go next to it. A couple of areas that I flagged go right next to it, but uh, not, not crossing any okay. stone walls. It's actually... The stone walls go like this, yeah, yeah. and the trail goes kind of like along them, mm -hmm. bouncing back and forth in, in between them, but not crossing them. Yeah. yeah, that's that's my only big concern is water crossings and stone wall crossings, because if we take a stone wall down or take a piece out of a stone wall, it'll invite other people to do it. So, okay, I. I see no issue with it. Does anyone want to go out and walk it? Verify it? Anyone have any questions? Or do you want to let Matt continue? I, I, I trust you, Matt. Yeah, I, yeah, I think. I'd love people to come out and see it. But yeah. I, 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 yeah. So you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna map it? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, the, the, the hard part is, is that I have a system that maps. Yeah. It just doesn't produce a map. It's mm -hmm. just a a tracking right. application. I'd, I'd really, like I said before in meetings, I'd love to get the system that's used by GZA and others, mm -hmm. and I could throw it in my backpack and map this whole town in a weekend. <laughs> 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 this weekend I did a 30-mile bike ride, all of Horse Hill, all of Greens Pond, rode over to uh, Greater Woods, Wrote all of Greater Woods and back. Yeah. Wow. Like I would have got three of our properties. Hmm. How much does that software cost? Yeah. That, that's yeah. a special. They have a special GPS. Mm. I, I that project's kind of stalled. I haven't gotten a lot of feedback on it lately. From an RPC. Yeah. yeah. And they they just canceled the latest brown bag meeting. 
so I didn't get it. So I'm not going to be able to make it over there and talk to him, but I probably should follow up. So it's not something feasible that we can purchase or borrow? Or it is. Sure well, we yeah. well, yeah, that was, that was the big holdup before, is we got someone who volunteered to do a small parcel, uh, Veterans Park. You know, there's only a couple of trails out in Venter Veterans Park. Uh, what we wanted to do was to have him go out, use their equipment, go out and do it, uh, walk the trails, find the park, the benches and stuff like that are out there, mark them, and then uh, NRPC was going to generate the map for Veterans Park. And that way we could test drive, you might say, before we did a larger property. And then things kind of went on hold, and I'm not sure where that went. I'm not sure if the volunteer couldn't do it or if NRPC had concerns, but I haven't followed up. Again, I just, my, my new position at work has really got me going. So, yeah, as you know, I've been emailing. Uh, you, you all see it. I don't send out emails typically yeah. till after 9 o'clock at night. Well, that's because I'm doing something else before 9 o'clock at night. So, that's all. A lot to see. So, all right. You, um, consensus or motion? Or are we good with Matt put, doing it? Got something to do this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I really love that property. It, Me too. It's it's a great pro property. You should really go out and wander around Wasserman Park. Yeah, it's a great yeah, yeah. The, the conservation side of it. It's a great parcel. There's, you know, you've got elevations. You've got old growth. You've got some neat stuff in there. So I, I've actually met with uh, Matt Casparius. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I met with him and discussed with him having a uh, cross country skiing and fat biking, which is a winter type of mountain biking mm -hmm. um, with big balloon type floaty tires that float on top of the snow. And um, he was all in favor of it. So we're going to set up a couple of events, mm -hmm. have the parking in Wasserman Park uh, on the resident side. And. Um, just have like a, a couple of events throughout the winter up there and he was he was all in favor in fact he was thinking about getting some snowshoes to be able to rent to the public oh yeah so and cross country skis so the, he was he was looking into that and mm -hmm. we we said we'd get in touch with each other again once the snow flies right. so looks like we might have a nice little event over there um, yeah instead of having to cross the road and you know now that there's enough trails over there, and this particular trail would be great to connect mm -hmm. one end to the other because if you if you don't cross the park the way this trail goes, you actually have to go down to Natticook and then back up. Right. Mm -hmm. So this trail kind of allows you to stay on a certain elevation without going all the way down to Natticook Lake. Yeah. And, uh, you know... Uh, e even though it's not snowmobile, uh, it's not authorized for snowmobiles, there's one loop in there that the snowmobiles are always on. Yeah, I know. And, uh, uh, you know, staying away from that with the non-motorized use is, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. So this trail will allow us to do that. Right. Good. Yeah, I'm looking at getting some new shoes this year, the running shoes, the ones that are much shorter. No. Well, then you can, then, then you can enter the race. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I just I've got two different pairs of snowshoes, and they're great for deep snow. They're great for going off roading, as I call it, because I I'll tell you it's it's a great time to go see parts of properties that you can't see it in is. the summertime because you got foliage issues and all that other stuff. Is I love to go off roading in my snowshoes. You know. it, it's it's busier yeah. in the winter. I got no greater woods is busier sure. in the winter. Yep, with I would completely agree. Yeah, yeah I love to go off roading. Yeah. So, and but and that's why th this year at Greater Woods, having our trails signed, mm. is going to be fantastic because the people that go there and just in the winter, are now going to see the signs and go, ah, I'm not good now. I can't get lost here in the summertime. So I, I really think we're going to get a lot of business mm -hmm. at Greater Woods just by signing 
over the winter. Yeah, good. Yeah, I, I just want the running shoes so I can get out on the main trails too and get a little bit quicker. Oh. Or you know, there's times a year when you don't really need a big snowshoe, so. Especially last winter when everything froze over and it was yeah. like a crust. So yeah, I mean that was that was unbelievable for getting off off road. Like yes. you said, yeah. you could just go anywhere. Right. Yeah. Okay. Christmas. Yeah. Yep, exactly. It's yeah. going on my Christmas yeah. list. It sounds like a watching, good idea. Right? I, think, yeah. I think I want a pair too. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else under other business? All right, so that takes us to minutes, minutes of November 3rd. Anyone have any uh, updates on the minutes? I'll move the minutes with a couple of corrections. Second. All right, so uh, starting on page one, line 38. Uh, at the end of that first sentence, it says copy attached. I'd like to delete it and then strip the copy out of the back of the minutes. Um, generally not in favor of adding things to the minutes, like backup information. <coughs> uh, I figure if people want the backup, the backup's available. We, it gets stored. If you went down and asked Sue for the backup for the meeting, you could get it. You can get the agenda, and you can get the minutes. Okay. So, uh, so, that, so it's really kind of a change that does two things. It strips pages nine on, out, and it changes that there. Uh, <coughs> Gage had a correction. I'll be honest with you, I stopped about the middle of page five and I didn't get a chance to get through them all. Something came up at work and I wasn't able to complete my minutes review. Uh, but Gage had a correction on line 33 on page five. Uh, it says the, the line, the sentence starts on, on 32. It says for Mayflower Road there are two quotes, one for overflows in the drain and another for the dam itself. It should mm -hmm. be one for overflow in the drain. So the S comes off. Right. Uh, anyone else? Um, I just had one on um, page three. Yeah. Um, line 12. I think that would be not to the extent of a T. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense at, towards the end of the line. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing else. Mm. That pretty good. Okay. Good. And I just had on page seven, um, number four. I think it would be for removal of trees. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. Removal. Yeah. That was line four. Yes. Yep. Anything else? All those in favor as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, that carries four zero zero. That takes care of minutes. Uh, there's no one here from the public any longer. Commissioner comments? Mike? I have no comment. Okay. Cindy? No? Nothing. Pat? Nothing. Uh, I don't either. I hope everyone has a terrific Thanksgiving. And uh, we will not see each other again until December. So, right? Move for adjournment. Yeah, good, Second. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Move by Cindy, seconded by Matt. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.
That passes 4-0-0 at 9.13 p.m. Good job. <laughs> removal specialist. Do you want the state agreement or the litigation? 